Want to speak real Russian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at RussianPod101.com. Hi, everybody. I'm Katusha from RussianPod101.com. Do you know how to say I love you in Russian? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say I love you and a special phrase for Valentine's Day. Let's start with the most common phrase. Я люблю тебя. Я люблю тебя. I love you. This phrase is direct. You should use it only when you're confessing your love. If you want to be less direct, you can use this phrase. Ты так много значишь для меня. Ты так много значишь для меня. It means you mean so much to me. Now, if you want to be more romantic in expressing your love for someone, you can say this phrase. Слова не могут описать мою любовь к тебе. Слова не могут описать Мою любовь к тебе. It means words can't describe my love for you. Now you know three different ways to say I love you in Russian. And here is one more. What if you want to spend Valentine's Day with someone special? In that case, say this phrase. Будешь ли ты моим Валентином? Will you be my Valentine? Будешь ли ты моим Валентином? Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. Listen to the expression and repeat after me. I love you. Я люблю тебя. Я люблю тебя. You mean so much to me. Ты так много значишь для меня. Ты так много значишь для меня. Words can't describe my love for you. Слова не могут описать мою любовь к тебе. Слова не могут описать мою любовь к тебе. Will you be my Valentine? Будешь ли ты моим Валентином? Будешь ли ты моим Валентином? Well then, did you know that on Valentine's Day it's common to give your love Valentines or in Russian Valentinki? These are small, heart-shaped cards that are typically red or pink. Traditionally, Valentines are unsigned because it's thought that the heart will point out the sender of the love note. People in love also give each other various small gifts, chocolates, a stuffed toy, or even jewelry. You just learned three different ways to say I love you in Russian and one special phrase for Valentine's Day. And if you're interested in learning more, don't forget to download your free Romance and Love cheat sheet, which includes romance words, compliments, and pickup lines. Check out the description below and go to RussianPod101.com now. I'll see you next time! Увидимся в следующем уроке! Today, me, Katisha, and you are gonna be discussing 15 happy words. Let's check it out. Счастливый. Happy. Счастливый. Happy. Счастливый. There is actually CH, well, Russian CH, SCH, but it sounds more like SH. SH. So you say, счастливый. Happy! My friend is happy to meet me. Мой друг счастлив меня встретить. Добрый. Kind. Добрый. Kind. Oh, you're so kind. Ой, ты такой добрый. You're so kind to me. Ты так ко мне добра. Thank you, спасибо. Замечательный. Great. Замечательный. Great. 
It's a bit longer than English version. You just say great here, great there. But in Russian, no, you use it only something is really great. So you say, замечательно, замечательно. Today is a great day. Сегодня замечательный день. Красивый, beautiful. Красивый, beautiful. So make someone happy and tell them they're beautiful. Oh. Она такая красивая. She's so beautiful. Or these flowers are so beautiful. Эти цветы такие красивые. Нравится. To like. Нравится. Like. I like to hang out with you. Мне нравится гулять с тобой. Мне нравится с тобой гулять. Смешной. Funny. Смешной. Funny. Ты такой смешной. You're so funny. Ты такой смешной. Or, in case of a girl, ты такая смешная. You're so funny, girl. Энергичный. Lively. Energetic. Энергия is energy. Your friend is so energetic. Твой друг такой энергичный. Like, maybe you like looking at him and he's dancing three hours straight and you're like... Твой друг такой энергичный. Your friend is so energetic. Wow, full of energy. Восторженный. Excited. Восторженный. Excited. I was so excited to watch you dance. Я была восторжена, когда увидела, как ты танцуешь. I was so excited when I saw you dancing. Я была восторжена твоим танцем. Позитивный. Positive. Позитивный. Positive. I try to stay positive all the time. Я стараюсь быть позитивной все время. Я стараюсь быть позитивной постоянно. Расслабленный. Relaxed. Расслабленный. Relaxed. I'm very relaxed right now. Я очень расслаблен сейчас. Somebody's giving me a massage, you can say, Oh, I'm so relaxed. Я так расслаблен. Сердечный, warm, сердечный, warm personality. Somebody is good to you. Он очень сердечный. Его поступки очень сердечные. Means uh, he does everything from, from the heart, from the bottom of the heart to you, for you. It's very, very kind and nice word, and I think you should use it. You should remember it. <laughs> Смеяться, to laugh. Смеяться. To laugh. Oh my god! <laughs> ah, you make me laugh. Ты заставляешь меня смеяться. You make me laugh so much. Ты меня заставляешь так смеяться. Довольный. Satisfied. Satisfied. Довольный. I'm so satisfied with my test results. Я так довольна результатами своего экзамена. Любить. To love. Любить. To love. I love jogging in the mornings. Я люблю бегать по утрам. Заботливый. Caring. Заботливый. Caring. Забота is a care. Somebody's care. Забота. Uh, my boyfriend is very caring. Мой парень очень заботливый. It's very nice. Okay, so today it was 15 happy words. For you in Russian and me, Katusha. Hope you could remember some and use it in your daily life. So don't forget to subscribe and see you later. Пока, пока. Hi, it's me, Katusha. How are you? How are you? How are you? Today, our new topic, as you could guess, is ten responses to "How are you?" Now let's begin. Давайте начнем. У меня все нормально. I'm fine. Now, how are you? Как дела? У меня все нормально. I'm fine. Спасибо, что спросили. Thank you for asking. How are you? Спасибо, что спросили. Thanks for asking. Thank you for asking. I'm fine. Как дела? Спасибо, что спросили. У меня все нормально. 
А ты? А у тебя? And you? How are you? And you? Как дела? А ты? А у тебя? I'm fine. And you? Как дела? У меня все нормально. А ты? У меня все отлично. I'm great. У меня все отлично. I'm great. And you? Я в порядке. I'm okay. How are you? I'm okay. And you? Как дела? Я в порядке, как ты. Я плохо чувствую себя. Я плохо себя чувствую. I'm feeling bad. Oh my god, how are you? Mm, I'm feeling bad. Как дела? Как ты себя чувствуешь? Я плохо себя чувствую. Я хочу спать. I'm sleepy. How are you? Uh, I'm sleepy. Uh, я хочу спать. Uh, how are you? Я тоже хорошо. I'm fine too. I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine too. У меня все хорошо. А ты? Я тоже хорошо. Спасибо. Я неплохо. I'm not bad. How are you? I'm not bad. And you? Как дела? Я неплохо. А у тебя? Как вы в последнее время? How have you been recently? Как вы в последнее время? How have you been recently? Uh, maybe I will ask this question to my grandmother. And maybe she would answer... I'm feeling bad. Я плохо себя чувствую. Катюша, how are you? <laughs> как дела? Как дела? Hmm? Как дела? Please tell me, how are you? Tell me now on RussianPod101.com. It was 10 responses to how are you. Пока, пока. Всем привет! Hi, it's me, Katusha. Today we're gonna talk about 20 travel phrases you should know. You cannot survive without these phrases, so pay attention. Вы говорите по-английски? Do you speak English? Hi, excuse me, do you speak English? Простите, извините, вы говорите по-английски? Здесь ходит автобус из аэропорта в город. Is there a bus from the airport to the city? Здесь ходит автобус из аэропорта в город. Is there a bus from the airport to the city? Этот автобус идет в аэропорт. Is this the right bus for the airport? And when you want to get to the airport, you should ask. Этот автобус идет в аэропорт. Is this the right bus to the airport? Где находится вокзал? Where is the train station? Где находится вокзал? Where is the train station? Извините, сколько оплата за проезд? Excuse me, what's the fare? When you want to take a train or a bus, you should ask Извините, а сколько стоит проезд? Excuse me, what's the fare? Не могли бы вы дать мне карту? Could I get a map? This should be the phrase you should always remember. Не могли бы вы дать мне карту? Could I get a map? <sighs> I'm lost again. У меня есть бронь. I have a reservation. First thing you should say when you're in a hotel is у меня есть бронь. I have a reservation. Не могли бы вы дать мне скидку? Could you give me a discount? When you're in shop, you can try asking. Не могли бы вы мне дать скидку? Could you give me a discount? Сколько это стоит? How much is this? Now this is a phrase which you can use everywhere. Сколько это стоит? How much is this? Можно померить? Can I try this on? Now when you're in a shop, you should say this. Можно померить? Can I try this on? Я бы хотел это. I'd like this. Hmm, when you cannot decide what you want in the shop and finally you know what you want, you should say Я бы хотел это. I would like this. Вы принимаете кредитные карты? Do you take credit card? Before you pay, you should ask. Вы принимаете кредитные карты? Do you take credit cards? 
The answer could be no, so be ready. Не могли бы вы сфотографировать меня, пожалуйста? Could you take a picture of me, please? And one of the phrases you can use at all the places you want to take a picture. Не могли бы вы сфотографировать меня, пожалуйста? Could you take a picture of me, please? Здесь есть бесплатный Wi-Fi? Is there a free Wi-Fi? Also, this phrase could be very useful while you're traveling. Здесь есть бесплатный Wi-Fi? Do you have free Wi-Fi? You should emphasize on бесплатный, free. Место для некурящих, пожалуйста. I'd like to have a non-smoking seat, please. If you don't smoke, please be careful to choose your seat. Место для некурящих, пожалуйста. I'd like to have a non-smoking seat, please. У вас есть какие-нибудь рекомендации? Do you have any recommendations? Hmm. У вас есть какие-нибудь рекомендации? Do you have any recommendations? Есть ли у вас какие-либо вегетарианские блюда? Do you have any vegetarian dishes? Есть ли у вас какие-нибудь вегетарианские блюда? Do you have any vegetarian dishes? У меня аллергия на арахис. I'm allergic to peanuts. У меня аллергия на арахис. I'm allergic to peanuts. Воды, пожалуйста. Water, please. Excuse me, water, please. Извините, воды, пожалуйста. Спасибо. Thank you. And, uh, of course, you should say спасибо. Thank you. Now, all these phrases are very important, maybe life-saving when you're traveling to Russia. So, do your best and try to remember them. Thank you for staying with me, Katusha. Please don't forget to subscribe and check out RussianPod101.com. Пока-пока! Hi everybody, this is Katusha from RussianPod101.com. Do you know what monsters Russian people are scared of? In this lesson, you learn about three scary monsters in Russia. Let's start with the most popular monster. Vadyanoi. Vadyanoi. It means waterman. The fierce-looking Vadyanoi is a male water spirit. Its skin is black or blue and it looks like an old man with scales, fins and a fish tail. It rules over mermaids and mermen and surfaces only at night. That sounds pretty scary, right? You might have heard about the next monster. The next one is Kashi. Kashi. It can be translated as bone in English. Thin and bony, Kashi is one of Russia's scariest monsters. The hideously ugly Kashi is immortal and kidnaps young women with the hope to seduce them. Living in the woods, he brings death to anyone who opposes him. Okay, here is the last monster. Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga. Have you heard of this next one? This is Yaga the witch. Baba Yaga is a scary old witch with iron teeth. This fearsome old hag has a long nose and a bony body. Living in the woods, she rules the elements but holds no power over the pure of heart. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. Listen to the names of each monster and repeat after me. Waterman Vadyanoi Vadyanoi Bone Kashi Kashi Yaga the witch Baba Yaga Baba Yaga Well done! 
Did you know there is a similar holiday to Halloween in Russia? Russians know about Halloween, but seldom celebrate it. In some regions, celebrating it is even forbidden. The Radonitsa is the festival closest to Halloween, where Orthodox Russians commemorate their departed family. This takes place on the second Tuesday after Easter. And that's it! You just learned about three of the scariest monsters in Russia and about Radonitsa, the Russian festival similar to Halloween. Now, learn Russian twice as fast by downloading all your PDF cheat sheets, including survival phrases, pickup lines, business etiquette, and more. Check out the description below and go to RussianPod101.com now! I'll see you next time! Пока -пока. <laughs> this is Katusha with RussianPod101.com. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <clears throat> Did I say run or run? Yeah. <laughs> run or run, people, monsters, <laughs> monsters are coming. <laughs> The Russian festival similar to... <laughs> Shall I shake like this? Okay, here's the last one. <laughs> I hope it's the last one. One of Russia. Russia. Okay. Всем привет! And it's me, Katusha. Hi there. And today we're going to be talking about a very delicious topic. 10 Russian foods. What Russian people eat. The first Russian food I'm going to talk about has a very weird name because I think it comes after somebody's family name. And it sounds like Bif Stroganov. And we talk about meat. So yes, I love Bif Stroganov. And now when I'm talking about it, I would want to have one. So let's order Bif Stroganov. Давай закажем бив строганов. Борщ. I think it's one of the most famous dishes of Russian cuisine. In other Soviet Union countries, they also have this dish. Some people would add mushrooms, some people would add bacon, some people would add only like pork or something else. Have you tried борщ before? Вы пробовали борщ раньше? Окрошка. Pay attention, I, it says O from the beginning, but actually when I say it, it sounds with A. Akroshka. We like to eat it cold, especially in summer. Please try Akroshka. Пожалуйста, попробуйте Akroshku. Пельмени. Reminding many people Chinese gyoza, it's minced meat inside. There cannot be anything else, only minced meat. So, пельмени. We can try and make пельмени together. Мы можем попробовать сделать пельмени вместе. Пирожки. Very famous from, again, Soviet Union times. Пирожки. Пирожки could be with cabbage, with meat, with um, berries, like fruits, apples. The grandmas were like outside baking пирожки at home and selling it just outside to anyone, any passing by person. Oh, so delicious! Hot пирожки! Горячие пирожки! Maybe even in old movies you can hear it. Горячие пирожки! Горячие пирожки! Hot пирожки! Hot пирожки! Everyone come up! Come and buy it from me! Сырники! Сырники are made of cottage cheese. And it's very good with a sour cream and a bit of sugar on top or like jam. Oh, it's so good! My mom делает очень вкусные сырники. My mom can cook very delicious сырники. Уха. Basically fish soup. It's actually food for people who go uh, fishing because with a simple um, set of uh, fire and uh, cooking pan. You just put water inside, you put fish that you just cut, potatoes, onion, and uh, like simple vegetables, and uh, it's ready. Ta-da! Ucha. Shi. Uh, so it's a traditional soup, commonly made of sorrel. In the countryside, we grow it a lot, sorrel. 
So it's very nice to eat it in summer because uh, with the sour cream, of course. It's great combination for summer when it's too hot. Krasne ikra, red caviar. So it used to be a very delicacy food in old times, so not everyone could afford it. Even now it's quite expensive if it's a good one. So, But we have many different, let's say, types of it, so you can go to the shop and choose the one you like. Which red caviar would you recommend? Какую красную икру вы бы порекомендовали? Вареники. Вареники. Вареники is similar to пельмени, but it has a different shape, like a half moon. Also, it can have not only meat, not only uh, apples or some vegetables. It can also have cottage cheese. And again, uh, the last touch, you add a sour cream in the end. I love Vareniki with uh, cherries. Very delicious. You should try one. So, please try cook Russian food or order it somewhere near a restaurant. And uh, hope you will enjoy it and hope you will love it. It was me, Katusha, and 10 Russian foods for you. So don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you another time. See you later. Пока -пока. Hi everybody, it's me, Katusha. Welcome to Russian Top Words. Today's our topic is must know expressions for agreeing and disagreeing. Welcome, let's begin. Давайте начнем. Я согласен. Masculine. Я согласна. Feminine. I agree. Я не согласен. Нет. Masculine. Я не согласна. Нет. Feminine. I don't agree. No. Я согласен. Masculine. Я согласна. Feminine. I agree. Я согласен. Я согласна. Will you go to movies with me? Yes, I will. Ты пойдешь со мной в кино? Да, я согласна. Я не согласен. Нет. Masculine? Я не согласна. Нет. Feminine? No, I don't agree. I think we can finish this project in two months. No, I don't agree. Мне кажется, мы можем закончить этот проект за два месяца. Нет, я не согласен. Will you marry me? Yes, I will. Ты согласна выйти за меня замуж? Да, я согласна. Я вся твоя. I'm all yours. Я так не думаю. I don't think so. Я так не думаю. I don't think so. I bet you can eat this cake in uh, three seconds. No. I don't think so. Я уверен, ты сможешь съесть это пирожное за три секунды. Нет, я так не думаю. Конечно. Of course. Конечно. Of course. Shall we stop by coffee shop? Sure, of course. Давай зайдем в кафешку. Конечно. Правда. That's true. Правда? That's true. Is it true you have twins now? That's true. <laughs> Это правда, что у тебя близнецы сейчас? Да, правда. Точно. Exactly. Точно. Exactly. I remember where you forgot your iPhone. It was on the sofa. Exactly. Я помню, что ты забыл свой iPhone на диване. Точно. Боюсь, что я не согласен. I'm afraid I disagree. Боюсь, что я не согласен. I'm afraid I disagree. I'm afraid I disagree with your political view. Боюсь, что я не согласен с твоим политическим взглядом. Я не могу не согласиться с вами. I couldn't agree with you more. Я не могу не согласиться с вами. I couldn't agree with you more. What a lovely weather. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. It's wonderful. Какая прекрасная погода. Ой, великолепно, я не могу не согласиться с вами. 
Полагаю, что так. I guess so. Полагаю, что так. I guess so. I think cinema was open till 9 p.m. I guess so. Мне кажется, кинотеатр был открыт до 9 вечера. Hmm. Полагаю, что так. Может быть. Maybe. Может быть. Maybe. Are you gonna go clubbing with us? Maybe. Ты пойдешь с нами в клуб? Может быть. Может быть. Что вы думаете? What do you think? Что вы думаете? What do you think? Shall I dye my hair? What do you think? Мне может покраситься? Что вы думаете? It was Mika, Tisha, and our new topic, must know expressions for agreeing and disagreeing. So let me know what do you think. What do you think? Что вы думаете? You agree or disagree? Согласна, не согласна. So we keep in touch. Check out RussianPod101.com and don't forget to comment. Пока, пока. Всем привет! Hi everybody, it's me, Katusha. Welcome to RussianPod101.com. Today our topic is five sentence patterns for beginners. So if you're a beginner, it's perfect for you. Watch me. Меня зовут. My name is. Меня зовут. And your name. My name is. And your name. Меня зовут Сергей. А вас? My name is Sergey. And you? Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah, I am. Я учитель. I am a teacher. Где? Where is? Где? Where is? Где Джон? Где вокзал? Where is John? Where is the station? Так. That's so. Так. That's so. <laughs> so. <laughs> так красиво. That's so beautiful. Так дорого. That's so expensive. I prefer beautiful example. <laughs> Я люблю. I like. Я люблю. I like. Я люблю шоколад. I like chocolate. Я люблю петь. I like to sing. There is a slight difference in like and love, but in this case, люблю is something you really, really like. So we also use it to love something, like I love chocolate. But if you really like something, you can also say this word in Russian. Люблю. Hey, so it was me, Katusha, with five sentence patterns for beginners. How did you like it? Please comment. And stay with me in RussianPod101.com. See you later. Пока, пока. Hi, everyone. Do you know the 1,000 most useful phrases? In Russian? In this lesson, you'll be able to know all of them. So sit back, relax, and have a cup of tea as you listen and learn. Где находится туалет? Извините. Клёво. У меня есть бронь. Сколько это стоит? Что это? Спасибо. Правда? Не могли бы вы дать мне скидку? Здесь есть бесплатный Wi-Fi? Могу я получить счет? У вас есть какие-нибудь рекомендации? Можно померить? You just learned the 1,000 most useful phrases in Russian. And if you're interested in learning more, try learning the core 2,000 word list.
With this, you'll understand 95% of the language, and best of all, this is not a joke. Check out the description below and go to RussianPod101.com now. See you next time. Hi, everybody. Всем привет. This is Mika Tish and welcome to Russian Top Words. And today our topic is top 10 phrases for surviving back to school. Stay with me. Рюкзак. Backpack. Рюкзак. Backpack. Ты уже собрал рюкзак на завтра? Have you already packed your backpack for tomorrow? Hmm? Одноклассник. Classmate. Одноклассник. Classmate. Хочу снова увидеть одноклассников. I want to see my classmates again. Домашняя работа. Homework. Домашняя работа. Homework. Ненавижу домашнюю работу. I hate homework. You too? <laughs> Экзамен. Exam. Экзамен. Exam. Ты готов к экзамену по математике? Are you ready for a math exam? Летние каникулы. Summer break. Летние каникулы. Summer break. Мы всегда путешествуем на летних каникулах. We always go traveling during summer break. Школа. School. Школа. School. Это лучшая школа в городе. This is the best school in the city. Учиться. To study. Учиться. To study. Ты знал, что я учился в той же школе? Did you know that I studied at the same school? Сегодня первый день занятий. It's the first day of class. Сегодня первый день занятий. It's the first day of class. Сегодня первый день занятий, и наша школа оживет снова. It's the first day of class, and our school will come to life again. Мы в одном классе. We're in the same class. Мы в одном классе! We're in the same class! Yay! High five! Я так рада, что мы в одном классе. I'm so glad we're in the same class. Вы на какие занятия ходите? What classes are you taking? Вы на какие занятия ходите? What classes are you taking? Вы на какие занятия ходите? Я учу русский язык. What classes are you taking? I study Russian. To ask me, Katisha, thank you for watching top 10 phrases for surviving back to school. I hope we all survived and we will survive. Thank you for staying with RussianPod101.com and don't forget to comment how much you hate your homework. Пока, пока. Want to speak real Russian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at RussianPod101.com. Hi, my name is Katusha and welcome back to Russian Top Words. Today our topic is What adjective describes your personality best? Let's begin. Давай начнем. Вежливый. Polite. Вежливый. Polite. Пожалуйста, будь вежливым. Please, be polite. Добрый. Kind. Добрый. Kind. Ты так добр. You're so kind. In case of women. You're so kind. Ты так добра. Прилежный. Diligent. Прилежный. Diligent. Я была очень прилежной в школе. I was very diligent at school. Серьезный. Serious. Серьезный. Serious. Серьезный. Serious. It's a bit similar, no? Are you serious? Ты серьезно? Скучный. Boring. Скучный. Boring. Oh, this movie is so boring. Это кино такое скучное. This movie is so boring. Этот фильм такой скучный. Застенчивый. Shy. Застенчивый. Shy. This little baby is so shy. Этот малыш такой застенчивый. Интровертированный. Introverted. Интровертированный. Introverted. I think my friend is introverted. Мне кажется, мой друг интровертированный. Мне кажется, мой друг интровертированный. Экстравертированный. 
extroverted, экстравертированный, extroverted. You must be extroverted. Ты, скорее всего, экстравертированный. Крутой. Cool. Крутой. Cool. You're cool. Ты крутой. Or you can say, you're cool. Ты крут. Смешной. Funny. Смешной. <laughs> funny. You're so funny. Ты такой смешной. This comedy is so funny. Эта комедия такая смешная. Thank you for watching and staying with me, Katusha. Today's topic was what adjectives describe your personality best. So now you can describe yourself in a funny or creative or brave way. Now don't forget to subscribe to Russian Pod 101 and please stay with us. See you later. Пока -пока. Hi everyone, Lina's here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, a place where you'll get answers to your most common Russian questions. The question for today is, can you tell us about the Russian language and where it's spoken? Sure I can. I'm glad people ask this question before they start learning Russian. It's good to have understanding of what you're learning before jumping straight into memorizing words and phrases. Russian is an East Slavic language with over 250 million native speakers around the world. Let me give you a brief introduction of the history of the Russian language. Russian is pretty old. It goes back to around 1st, 2nd centuries BC and comes from a combination of dialects from the Indo-European language family. The first origins of Russian come from Russia's literary language, Old Slavonic. Around the same time, the 1st, 2nd centuries BC, the first Slavic alphabet was created by two Greek missionaries and philologists, Cyril and his brother Methodius. Later that language was split into Russian, Ukrainian and Belarusian, which you can hear spoken today. Later, in the 17th, 18th centuries, Peter the Great played a big role in the formation of the modern-day Russian by combining its Slavic written language with Russian everyday spoken language. Russian is not only the official language of Russia, but also of many other post-Soviet countries, such as Belarus, Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. It's also widely spoken in the Ukraine, Moldova, the Baltic states and many other former Soviet Union countries. As you can see, learning Russian doesn't limit you to Russia only. It opens up new opportunities to speak to other people from many different countries. Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. До встречи! Hello friends, my name is Anthony and welcome to the words. Today we are going to be talking about the top 10 gamer speak words. Let's start! And first word – достижение, achievement. In video gaming, achievement also sometimes known as a trophy, badge, award, stamp, medal or challenge is a meta goal defined outside of a game's parameters. Поздравляем с получением нового достижения! Congratulations on getting the new achievement! Next word – киберспорт – e-sports. E-sports is a sport associated with competitions in various video games. Мой друг решил заняться киберспортом. My friend decided to do e-sports. Next word – RPG – RPG – role-player game is a game in which players assume the roles of characters in a fictional setting. Мои друзья и я начали играть в RPG. My friends and I started playing in RPG. Next word. Пошаговая стратегия. Turn-based strategy. Is a strategy game where players take turn when playing. For example, the game Heroes of Mind and Magic. Компания Sega в 2016 году выпустила пошаговую стратегию Total War Warhammer. The company Sega in 2016 released a turn-based strategy Total War Warhammer. Next war 
NPC, NPC, non-player characters. This is game characters non-controlled by the player, such as monsters or characters that give you tasks in the game. Я только что получил новое задание у этого NPC. I just absorbed a new assignment from this NPC. Next word, контрольная точка. Checkpoint. This is a certain place in the game where you can save your gameplay and also move to the next task. Наконец-то я добрался до чекпоинта. Finally, I got to the checkpoint. Next word, boss. Boss. This is the most powerful opponent in the game, after which the game is over. Or you can move to the next level. В этой игре такой сильный босс. In this game is such a strong boss. Next word. After сохранение. Auto save. This is the most cool thing in the game, because after auto save, you cannot be afraid to lose all your gameplay. Это был очень сложный уровень. И я рад, что здесь есть автосохранение. It was a very difficult level, and I'm glad that there is a to save here. Next word. Молодец. Well played. This is one of the form of praise for a good game. Ты победил последнего босса и прошел эту игру. Молодец. You defeated the last boss and bought this game. Well played. Next word. Cheater. Cheater. This is a player who uses third party programs to achieve better results in the game. And no one liked them. Посмотрите на его игру. Он же явный читер. Look at his game. He's an obvious cheater. And for the day, so thank you so much for watching. Today we are talk about the top 10 gamers pick words and what is your favorite video game. And don't forget to check out RussianPod11.com to learn more Russian. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Пока пока. Bye bye. Привет всем. Меня зовут Анастасия. 25 января православные христиане отмечают День памяти Святой Татьяны. Однако трудно отыскать российского студента, который бы шумно не отмечал Татьянин день. Как вы думаете, почему? Да просто 25 января – это еще и День студента в России. И в этом уроке мы поговорим именно о нем. Как вы думаете, кто из святых считается покровителем студентов в России? Мы покажем вам ответ в конце этого видео. Началось все с того, что 12 января 1755 года, еще тогда по старому календарю, в день памяти святой Татьяны, императрица Елизавета Петровна подписала указ о создании Московского университета. С тех пор начали праздновать день основания университета. Однако отмечали его не 12 января, а 25. -го. И только в 19 столетии, благодаря указу Николая I, в этом столетии, благодаря университета было перенесено на 12 января на Татьянин день. А в 2005 году 25 января официально стал днем российского студента. 25 января по новому стилю – это 12 января по-старому. В России День студента празднуется с размахом. Студенты большими компаниями отмечают этот праздник в барах или ресторанах. В Московском государственном университете в храме Святой Татьяны проводится традиционная торжественная служба. А после этого студенты зажигают символическую чашу знаний у памятника Ломоносова. Вечером можно увидеть красочный фейерверк. Кстати, в России существует много студенческих обычаев, которые, как считается, помогают хорошо сдать экзамен. Например, перед экзаменом не следует мыть голову. Брать экзаменационный билет нужно только левой рукой. Нельзя надевать на экзамен новую одежду. А также нельзя стирать одежду, в которой был удачно сдан экзамен. Иначе можно смыть удачу. Татьянин день, многие кафе, рестораны и магазины предлагают студентам различные скидки. А в 2014 году власти Москвы подготовили студентам особый подарок – бесплатный вход на катки столичных парков. А теперь я отвечу на заданный ранее вопрос. Как вы думаете, кто из святых считается покровителем студентов в России? Как вы уже догадались, покровительницей студентов и педагогов является святая Татьяна. Кстати, она также является покровительницей всех Татьян. Как вам урок? 
Вы узнали для себя что-нибудь новенькое? О вашей стране празднуют День студента? Вы можете оставить для нас ваши комментарии на RussianPod101.com. Увидимся в следующем уроке. Hi everybody, and it's me, Katisha, with you, and today our topic is very special. Top 10 phrases you'll need for a date. Let's go! Не хотела бы ты со мной поужинать? Would you like to go out to dinner with me? Не хотела бы ты поужинать со мной? Would you like to go out to dinner with me? This sentence addressed for a girl, so girls, you should be careful, and you should change it a little bit, but it's perfect for guys asking a girl for a dinner. Ты свободен в эти выходные? Are you free this weekend? Ты свободен в эти выходные? Are you free this weekend? Now, girls, this sentence addressed for a guy, so you can use it freely, but guys, be careful. Otherwise, you want to ask another guy if he's free for a weekend. No problem. Сходим куда-нибудь вместе? Would you like to hang out with me? Сходим куда-нибудь вместе? Would you like to hang out with me? This sentence can be used by men or female, it, or just friends, or not. doesn't have to be people who want to be in a relationship. Just very easy, you can use it for anyone. Ты такая милая. You're so cute. Ты такая милая. You're so cute. I'm not sure if you can say this to a girl. It sounds more like you are saying it to a dog or a cat because it's cute. Cute. <laughs> the guys can say it if the girl really makes them feel like um, relaxed. They look at her and they want to smile, you know. So, but the girls cannot say the sentence because it's addressed to a girl. Unless you want to say a comment to your friend, girlfriend. Выглядишь потрясающе. You look great. Выглядишь потрясающе. You look great. You can say that when somebody looks really amazing, like wearing some wedding dress or something really, really great outfit. Это был отличный вечер. That was a great evening. Это был отличный вечер. That was a great evening. And don't expect to hear thank you after Russians. <laughs> Я тебе позвоню. I'll call you. Я тебе позвоню. I'll call you. Don't believe that. <laughs> Я отвезу тебя домой. I'll drive you home. Я отвезу тебя домой. I'll drive you home. You can use the sentence for any gender. No problem. Во сколько завтра встретимся? What time shall we meet tomorrow? Во сколько завтра встретимся? What time shall we meet tomorrow? Hmm? Hmm. We're gonna meet tomorrow, right? <laughs> Мы увидимся снова. Can I see you again? Может, пойдем куда-нибудь еще? Shall we go somewhere else? Like movies, bowling, totally usable. So it was top 10 phrases you need for a date and me, Katusha, helping you say it out. So don't hesitate, go for it. Well, I'll see you in the next lesson. Пока, пока. How are your Russian listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Сотрудники кофейни разговаривают о продажах. Выберите график, на который они смотрят. У нас были хорошие продажи с декабря по февраль. Да, наш товар продавался неплохо. Но, к сожалению, наш новый продукт, который мы выпустили в продажу в марте, продавался не очень хорошо. И в конечном итоге тянет вниз общий объем продаж за март месяц. Да, продажи в октябре и в марте были так себе. И хотя наши продажи в целом растут, октябрь был наихудшим месяцем. Я думаю, это из-за того, что наш конкурент в октябре открыл свою кофейню по соседству и вначале переманил наших клиентов. Но, слава богу, клиенты к нам вернулись. Наши данные показывают, что более половины наших клиентов составляют женщины в возрасте от 20 до 30 лет. Поэтому мы должны придумать какие-нибудь новые идеи, как сохранить наших клиентов. 
Кроме наших постоянных кофейных товаров, мы можем попытаться предложить более широкий выбор гарниров. Да, но около 20% наших клиентов составляют мужчины в возрасте от 20 до 30 лет, так что мы должны подумать и об услугах, рассчитанных на них. Понимаю. Например, мы можем предложить бизнесменам бесплатный Wi-Fi. Да, неплохая идея. Выберите график, на который они смотрят. Сотрудники кофейни разговаривают о продажах. Выберите график, на который они смотрят. У нас были хорошие продажи с декабря по февраль. Да, наш товар продавался неплохо. Но, к сожалению, наш новый продукт, который мы выпустили в продажу в марте, продавался не очень хорошо. И в конечном итоге тянет вниз общий объем продаж за март месяц. Да, продажи в октябре и в марте были так себе. И хотя наши продажи в целом растут, октябрь был наихудшим месяцем. Я думаю, это из-за того, что наш конкурент в октябре открыл свою кофейню по соседству и вначале переманил наших клиентов. Но, слава богу, клиенты к нам вернулись. Наши данные показывают, что более половины наших клиентов составляют женщины в возрасте от 20 до 30 лет. Поэтому мы должны придумать какие-нибудь новые идеи, как сохранить наших клиентов. Кроме наших постоянных кофейных товаров, мы можем попытаться предложить более широкий выбор гарниров. Да, но около 20% наших клиентов составляют мужчины в возрасте от 20 до 30 лет, так что мы должны подумать и об услугах, рассчитанных на них. Понимаю. Например, мы можем предложить бизнесменам бесплатный Wi-Fi. Да, неплохая идея. Всем привет! Hi, it's me, Katisha. And today our topic is top 10 phrases your parents always say. Let's see if these phrases sound familiar to you. Будь осторожен. Be careful. Number one. Будь осторожен. Be careful. Be careful. Тише. Be quiet. Тише. Be quiet. Тише. Тут нельзя разговаривать. Be quiet. You cannot speak in here. It's like usually in a theater or in a museum, you know. In church. <laughs> Yeah, or in church, yes. Always same thing. Веди себя хорошо. Behave. Веди себя хорошо. Behave. Сейчас мы пойдем к моей подруге. Веди себя хорошо. We're going to visit my friends. Behave yourself. Делай домашнюю работу. Do your homework. Делай домашнюю работу. Do your homework. Ты сделал домашнюю работу? Сейчас же делай домашнюю работу. Did you do your homework? Do your homework now. Иди спать. Go to bed. Иди спать. Go to bed. Выключи телевизор. No more TV. Go to bed now. Иди спать сейчас же. Считаю до трех. I'm going to count to three. Считаю до трех. I'm going to count to three. Выключи компьютерную игру сейчас же. Я считаю до трех. Turn off your computer now. I'm going to count to three. Раз, два, три. No, no, don't, 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 don't enough. Stay with me, stay with me, Katusha, Russian language. <laughs> Хватит. Stop. Хватит. Stop. Хватит плакать. Хватит. Все. Хватит. Stop running around. Stop. Хватит бегать. Хватит. Что ты сказал? What did you say? Что ты сказал? What did you say to your mother? What did you say? Excuse me. Can you repeat it again? Я не шучу. I'm not kidding. Я не шучу. I'm not kidding. Так, я не шучу. I'm not kidding. Seriously. Сейчас же выключай телевизор. Turn the TV off now. Сейчас же выключай телевизор. 
Turn the TV off now. Сейчас же выключай телевизор. Который час уже? What time is it? Turn the TV off now. So what do you think? Did your parents tell you same things? Now you can repeat it in Russian. <laughs> and they won't understand it. Which is a good part. Now it was 10 phrases your parents always say. Stay with me, Katusha, and I will see you in another lesson. Don't forget to comment and subscribe to RussianPod101.com. Пока, пока! Want to speak real Russian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at RussianPod101.com. Hello friends, my name is Anthony and welcome to Top Words. Today we are going to be talking about the top 10 phrase stories should never use. Let's start! And the first phrase – это отвратительно. That's disgusting. When a person don't like something very much, he says, this is disgusting. Мне кажется, это отвратительно. I think this is disgusting. Next phrase – моя страна лучше. My country is better. Each country is unique and magnificent in its own way. Therefore, it will be ugly and not correct to say that some one country is better. Моя страна лучше. Нет, моя страна лучше. My country is better. No, my country is better. Next phrase. Заткнись. Shut up. This is a root form of the world be silent, usually used during curl. Ты мне уже надоел. Заткнись. I'm already bored of you. Shut up. Next phrase. Мне не особенно интересна ваша культура. I'm not very interested in your culture. Culture is different anywhere, so you should not say that some were better and some were worse. У вас скучные праздники. Мне не особо интересна ваша культура. You have boring holidays. I'm not very interested in your culture. Next phrase. Я не люблю знакомиться с новыми людьми. I don't like meeting new people. People are different. Someone likes to meet new people and some do not. But there's nothing wrong. Just be a good person and people will be kind to you. К примеру, я интроверт и я не люблю знакомиться с новыми людьми. For example, I'm an introvert and I do not like meeting new people. Next phrase. Давайте просто поедим в Макдональдсе. Let's just eat at McDonald's. Everyone know what fast food is. By the way, we discussed it. this world is one of the first lessons. Something you need to eat quickly and continue to run do your things. In such cases you can help out one of the fast food restaurants, for example, McDonald's. By the way, in Russia it is something called short McDuck. У меня совсем нет времени. Может, давай просто поедим в Макдональдсе? Давай. I don't have time. Maybe let's just eat at McDonald's? Okay. Next phrase. Скучно. Boring. When you have nothing to do or a bad weather outside the window, you get bored. Мне скучно. Пошли в другое место. I'm bored. Let's go to another place. Next phrase. На вкус ужасно. This tastes awful. If you decide to travel, be prepared for the fact that the cuisine of other countries may differ from your countries. Very much differ. Therefore, maybe this tastes awful for you, but for other people it can be the most favorite dish. Что ты думаешь насчет этого блюда? Мне не понравилось. На вкус ужасно. What do you think about this dish? I do not like. This tastes awful. Next phrase. Я собираюсь провести весь день в отеле. I'm going to spend the day in the hotel. It's strange, but there are people who do not leave their hotel room at all during the trip. Я собираюсь провести весь день в отеле. I'm going to spend the day in the hotel. Next phrase. Это глупо. This is stupid. This phrase means something illogical, something stupid, ironically. Мой друг купил автомобиль, но у него нет водительских прав. Это так глупо. 
My friend bought a car, but he doesn't have a driver license. It is so stupid. And for today it's all. Thank you so much for watching. Today we are talking about the top 10 phrase stories should never use. And what kind of similar phrases do you know? Write your answers in the comments. And don't forget to check out RussianPod11.com to learn more Russian. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Пока -пока. Bye -bye. Привет всем! Меня зовут Анастасия. Каждый год, 19 декабря, Русская Православная Церковь отмечает День Святого Николая, который является одним из самых любимых и почитаемых святых в народе. В этом уроке я расскажу вам более детально об этом празднике и о том, как его празднуют в России. Как вы думаете, где на Руси был построен первый храм в честь святого Николая? Мы покажем вам ответ в конце этого видео. Святой Николай был реальным человеком, который родился в III веке нашей эры в довольно-таки богатой семье. Однако все унаследованное богатство он направил на помощь бедным и нуждающимся. Вся жизнь святого Николая была наполнена добрыми делами, любовью и заботой о ближних. Он исцелял людей от болезней, утешал их в горе, подавал руку помощи всем, кому это было необходимо. Святой Николай считается покровителем путешественников и мореплавателей. Именно к нему с давних времен моряки и путешественники обращались с молитвой уберечь их от опасности в дороге или в плавании. Святой Николай совершил столько чудес, что его еще называют Николаем Чудотворцем. Даже в наши дни можно услышать много историй о чудесах, которые совершает этот святой в ответ на молитвы о помощи. В России потихоньку возрождаются традиции празднования этого праздника. Во многих семьях детям кладут маленькие подарки под подушку. Наиболее популярные подарки – это разные сладости или плюшевые игрушки. Сладкие медовые пряники или печенье, которые дарят детям, называются николайчиками. В каждой православной церкви можно найти иконы святого Николая. Как правило, его изображают с белоснежными волосами и бородой. Говорят, что именно он явился прообразом современного Санта-Клауса. А теперь я отвечу на заданный ранее вопрос. Как вы думаете, где на Руси был построен первый храм в честь святого Николая? По свидетельству Нестора Летописца, первый храм на Руси в честь святого Николая был построен в IX веке в Киеве, нынешней столице Украины, на могиле убитого князя Аскольда. Как вам урок? Вы узнали для себя что-нибудь новенькое? А в вашей стране празднуют День Святого Николая? Вы можете оставить для нас ваши комментарии на russiancode101.com. Увидимся в следующем уроке. Мужчина жалуется на товары, которые он купил по интернету. Что он собирается поменять? Добрый день, служба поддержки клиентов. Чем могу вам помочь? Добрый день. Мне только что доставили мой заказ, но это совсем не то, что я заказывал. Мы просим прощения за ошибку. Скажите, пожалуйста, что именно не так? Я заказывал куртку с тремя пуговицами, но у той, что я получил, только две. Понятно. Наверное, это другая модель. Мы ужасно сожалеем об этом. Мы поменяем эту куртку на нужную вам модель. Спасибо. Также рубашка выглядит совсем по-другому, чем на вашем сайте. Это совсем не то, что я ожидал. Поэтому я хочу ее вернуть. А в чем отличие? Я думал, что это рубашка без воротника, но это оказалась рубашка пола с воротником. Понятно. Вы уже срезали бирки? Да, срезал. Но это действительно не то, что было на картинке. Могу я все же ее вернуть? Дело в том, что у нас есть эта рубашка и с воротником, и без воротника. По нашим данным, вы выбрали именно ту, что с воротником. Правда? Я, наверное, случайно нажал не на тот товар. Мы можем поменять товар, если на нем есть бирка. Но, к сожалению, мы не можем поменять товар без бирки. Ясно. Тогда вы можете поменять хотя бы куртку? Конечно. Еще раз просим прощения за неудобство. Что он собирается поменять? Мужчина жалуется на товары, которые он купил по интернету. Что он собирается поменять? Добрый день, служба поддержки клиентов. Чем могу вам помочь? Добрый день. 
Мне только что доставили мой заказ, но это совсем не то, что я заказывал. Мы просим прощения за ошибку. Скажите, пожалуйста, что именно не так? Я заказывал куртку с тремя пуговицами, но у той, что я получил, только две. Понятно. Наверное, это другая модель. Мы ужасно сожалеем об этом. Мы поменяем эту куртку на нужную вам модель. Спасибо. Также рубашка выглядит совсем по-другому, чем на вашем сайте. Это совсем не то, что я ожидал. Поэтому я хочу ее вернуть. А в чем отличие? Я думал, что это рубашка без воротника, но это оказалась рубашка пола с воротником. Понятно. Вы уже срезали бирки? Да, срезал. Но это действительно не то, что было на картинке. Могу я все же ее вернуть? Дело в том, что у нас есть эта рубашка и с воротником, и без воротника. По нашим данным, вы выбрали именно ту, что с воротником. Правда? Я, наверное, случайно нажал не на тот товар. Мы можем поменять товар, если на нем есть бирка. Но, к сожалению, мы не можем поменять товар без бирки. Ясно. Тогда вы можете поменять хотя бы куртку? Конечно. Еще раз просим прощения за неудобство. Wanna speak real Russian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at RussianPod101.com. Hi everybody, it's me, Katusha. Welcome to RussianPod101.com. Today our topic is 10 ways to motivate yourself when learning Russian. Let's begin. Я представляю, как однажды поеду в Россию или буду там жить. Я представляю, как однажды Поеду в Россию или буду там жить. I imagine that one day I'll visit or live in Russia. Я представляю, как однажды я поеду в Россию или буду там жить. I imagine that one day I'll visit or live in Russia. <laughs> well, I recommend you start with visiting first. <laughs> Я также изучаю другие аспекты русской культуры. Так учить язык интереснее. Я также изучаю другие аспекты русской культуры. Так учить язык интереснее. I've studied other aspects of the Russian culture too, which makes it more rewarding to study the language. Я также изучаю другие аспекты русской культуры. Так язык учить интереснее. I've studied all the aspects of the Russian culture too, which makes it more rewarding to study the language. Я люблю находить забавные слова в языке, которые изучаю. Я люблю находить Забавные слова в языке, которые изучаю. I like to find funny words in Russian. Я люблю находить забавные слова в языке, которые изучаю. I like to find funny words in Russian. Пук. Я стараюсь подружиться с людьми, которые говорят по-русски. Я стараюсь подружиться с людьми, которые Говорят по-русски. I try to make friends with people who speak Russian. Я стараюсь подружиться с людьми, которые говорят по-русски. I try to make friends with people who speak Russian. Another way of motivating yourself is watching videos on YouTube of people who successfully learned Russian. Мне нравится по-русски заказывать еду в русских ресторанах. Мне нравится по-русски заказывать еду в русских ресторанах. I enjoy speaking Russian to order food at Russian restaurants. Мне нравится по-русски заказывать еду в русских ресторанах. I enjoy speaking Russian to order food in Russian restaurants. Next time when you're in Russian restaurant, try ordering борщ or вареники по-русски in Russian. Good luck! Удачи! Я смотрю русские фильмы и телепередачи и радуюсь, когда понимаю слово или предложение. Я смотрю русские фильмы и телепередачи и радуюсь, 
когда понимаю слово или предложение. I watch Russian movies and TV shows and enjoy the feeling when I understand a word or sentence. Я смотрю русские фильмы и телепередачи и радуюсь, когда понимаю слово или предложение. I watch Russian movies and TV shows and enjoy the feeling when I understand the word or sentence. Я учу наизусть любимые русские песни и напеваю их все время, с каждым днем понимая все больше. Я учу наизусть любимые русские песни и напеваю их все время, с каждым днем понимая все больше. I learned my favorite Russian songs by heart and sing them all the time. I understand the lyrics better every day. Я учу наизусть любимые русские песни и напеваю их все время. С каждым днем понимаю все больше и больше. <laughs> I learned my favorite Russian songs by heart and uh, sing it every day. I understand the lyrics better every day. Я ищу рецепты на русском языке и готовлю какое-нибудь блюдо русской кухни каждые выходные. Я ищу рецепты на русском языке и готовлю какое-нибудь блюдо русской кухни каждые выходные. I search for recipes in Russian and cook Russian food every weekend. Another way is cooking. Cooking in Russian. What can be better? Я ищу рецепты на русском языке и какое-нибудь блюдо русской кухни готовлю каждые выходные. I search for recipes in Russian and cook Russian food every weekend. Я прошу русских друзей советовать мне интересные новости и статьи на русском. Я прошу русских друзей советовать мне интересные новости и статьи на русском. I ask my friends to give me interesting Russian news and other articles to read. Do you have Russian friends? So that's another tip. Я прошу русских друзей советовать мне интересные новости и статьи на русском. I ask my friends to give me interesting Russian news and other articles to read. Пересматривая видео на русском, которое не мог понять раньше, чтобы почувствовать, каких успехов достиг. Пересматривай видео на русском, которое не мог понять раньше, чтобы почувствовать, каких успехов достиг. Rewatch the videos in Russian you couldn't understand before to feel the real progress you've made. Don't forget to check RussianPod101.com for more videos and other tools. Пересматривать те видео на русском, которые не мог понять раньше, чтобы почувствовать, каких ты успехов достиг. Rewatch the videos in Russian you couldn't understand before to feel the progress you've made. Well, guys, that's my 10 ways to motivate you learning Russian. I hope it will help you. If you're stuck and you, you feel you cannot progress, try singing or watching animations. If you have any tips, please share with me and don't forget to subscribe and like the video. See you next time. Пока -пока. Hello friends, my name is Anthony and welcome to Top Words. Today we are going to be talking about the top 10 most common tourist vocabulary. Let's start. And first word, билет. Ticket. Ticket, this is a document certifying the right to use something for a free. Два билета, пожалуйста. Two ticket, please. Next word. Tourist. 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 This is a person who entered surprisingly in tourism. В этом году страну посетило много туристов. A lot of tourists visited the country this year. Next word. Путеводитель. Guidebook. Guidebook printed the electronic of 
audiovisual reference book about a SM city. Перед поездкой в какую-нибудь страну я всегда покупаю путеводитель. I always buy a guidebook before traveling to a country. Next word. Экскурсионный автобус. Tour bus. Tour bus type of bus designed to carry passengers for sightseeing. Экскурсионный автобус отправляется с Ленинградского вокзала. The tour bus will depart from Leningradsky station. Next word. Храм. Temple. Temple a cold construction intended to communicate people with a god. Этот храм был восстановлен после пожара. This temple was restored after a fire. Next word. Мечеть. Mosque. Mosque. This is a prayer house for Muslims. Московская соборная мечеть – одна из крупнейших в Европе. Moscow Cathedral Mosque is one of the biggest in Europe. Next word. Церковь. Church. Church and temple are synonyms. For example, a Christian temple is called a church. So the church is the Christian community as a whole and the form of organization of believing Christians. В каждом, даже самом маленьком городе России есть церковь. Each and every town of Russia, even the smallest, has a church. Next word – водопад. Waterfall. The waterfall is the swiftly falling stream of water. Водопаду Хибач посвящали стихотворения известные русские поэты. Famous Russian poets dedicated poems to the Kibach waterfall. Next word. Dvarets. Palace. Palace is a large public building, usually distinguished by its architecture. Этот дворец служил резиденцией для императорской семьи более 300 лет. The palace served as a residence for the royal family for over 300 years. Next word. Гид. Гайд. Гайд human that accompanying tourists or scissors and explaining that they see. Гид рассказал много интересного об истории города. The guy told us many interesting things about the history of the city. And for that it's all. Thank you so much for watching. Today we were talked about the top 10 most common tourist vocabulary. And what kind of tourist words do you know? Write the answers in the comments. And don't forget to check out RussianPod11.com to learn more Russian. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Пока -пока. Bye -bye. Hi everybody! Всем привет! This is me, Katusha. Welcome to Russian Top Words. Today our topic is Top 10 ways to prepare your travel. Let's go! Поехали! Выбрать направление. To choose your destination. Выбрать направление. To choose your destination. Для начала нужно выбрать направление. First of all, you should choose your destination. You can use the sentence when you're in the car using a navigation. Купить путеводитель. To buy a guidebook. Купить путеводитель. To buy a guidebook. Давай купим этот путеводитель. Let's buy this guidebook. You can use this phrase as soon as you arrive to the airport. Накопить денег. To save money. Накопить денег. To save money. Я хочу накопить денег и поехать в Англию следующим летом. I want to save money and go to England next summer. Забронировать билеты. To book a flight. Забронировать билеты. To book a flight. Ты уже забронировал билеты? Have you booked a flight already? Подсчитать затраты. To calculate the costs. Подсчитать затраты. To calculate the costs. Прежде чем ехать куда-то, нужно подсчитать 
все затраты. You should calculate all the costs before going somewhere. Написать заявление на отпуск. To request vacation time. Написать заявление на отпуск. To request vacation time. Я собираюсь в Сочи на неделю. И уже написал заявление на отпуск. I'm going to Sochi for a week and requested vacation time already. Забронировать отель. To book accommodation. Забронировать отель. To book accommodation. Какой отель ты забронировал? What accommodation did you book? The thing is, in Russian, отель is closer to hotel meaning, but we also have another word in Russian meaning hotel is гостиница. Гостиница. It's a bit longer, so you can stick to hotel, отель. So it's easy to remember for you. Отель. Получить международные водительские права. To obtain an international driving license. Получить международные водительские права. To obtain an international driving license. Он получил международные водительские права в прошлом году. He got an international driving license last year. Поменять паспорт. To renew your passport. Поменять паспорт. To renew your passport. Мне нужно поменять загранпаспорт. Срок действия скоро закончится. I need to renew my traveling passport. It expires soon. By saying traveling passport, we mean that we have actually two passports. One passport is for inside the country. It's like your ID document. And another passport is for traveling abroad. So you usually use it to put your visas or stamps when you enter and leave another country. Собрать вещи. To pack. Собрать вещи. To pack. Собрать вещи лучше заранее. It's better to pack all your stuff beforehand. So, how are you? Are you ready for your travel? I hope our topic would be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and check our other topics on RussianPod101.com. See you later. Пока -пока. Hello, friends. My name is Anthony and welcome to Top Words. Today we are going to be talking about the 10 must romantic ideas for a date. Let's start. Ужин при свечах. Candlely dinner. You need to turn off all the lights in your house. Set the table for two and light the candles. Idly. Моя девушка устроила ужин при свечах на 14 февраля. My girlfriend made a candle dinner on February 14th. Отправиться на долгую прогулку. To go for a long walk. You can walk in the park, in the woods, around the city. This will help you become closer to each other. Если хочешь поближе познакомиться с девушкой, предложи ей отправиться куда-нибудь на долгую прогулку. If you want to get to know the girl, you should invite her to go somewhere for a long walk. Пойти в боулинг. To go bowling. During joint activities, you can best get to know each other. Playing bowling alley is a great opportunity for this. Я пригласил ее в боулинг в субботу. I am invited here to go bowling on Saturday. Сходить в океанариум. To go to the aquarium. Aquarium is also a great place for your date. Не хочешь сходить в океанариум завтра? Would you like to go to the aquarium tomorrow? Next idea. Пойти в оперу. To go to the opera. Do you like opera? If so, don't hesitate to go there to celebrate your date. Жена предложила пойти в оперу на нашу годовщину. My wife suggested we go to the opera for our anniversary. Сходить в зоопарк. To go to the zoo. Go to the zoo, look at animals, relax. It's so wonderful. Мы ходили в зоопарк вчера. Ели мороженое и много разговаривали. We went to the zoo yesterday and eat ice cream and talked a lot. Устроить пикник? Have a picnic. You can take some food beverages, go out into nature and have a picnic. Может, устроить пикник? Что думаешь? Maybe we should have a picnic. What do you think? Next idea. Поужинать и посмотреть фильм. To have dinner and see a movie. 
If you don't want to go somewhere, you can stay at home, eat dinner and watch some interesting movie. Я устал сегодня. Давай просто поужинаем и посмотрим фильм. I'm so tired today. Let's just have dinner and see a movie. Next idea. Прокатиться на пароме. To take a ferry ride. To take a ferry ride is a very romantic idea for a date. Прокатиться на пароме на закате – отличная идея для свидания. Taking a ferry ride at sunset is a great idea for the date. Пойти в музей. To go to the museum. To go to the museum and look at interesting historical objects is a great idea, especially for a date. Тебе не кажется, что походы по музеям – это немного старомодно? Нет, думаю, ей понравится. Don't you think that going to the museum is kind of old-fashioned? No, I think she is going to like it. And for today it's all. Thank you so much for watching. Today we are talking about the 10 most romantic ideas for a date. And which idea did you like most? Write your answers in the comments. And don't forget to check out RussianProd11.com to learn more Russian. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Пока-пока. Bye-bye. Hi, everybody. Всем привет. It's me, Katisha. And welcome to RussianProd11.com. Today our new topic is What are your 10 language learning goals for the year? Huh? Come on, tell me. So, let's find out. Я закончу серию фразы для выживания на RussianPod101.com. Слушая два урока в день. I'll finish the survival phrases series on RussianPod101.com by listening to two lessons a day. Я закончу серию фразы для выживания на RussianPod101.com, слушая два урока в день. I'll finish the survival phrases series on RussianPod101.com by listening to two lessons a day. Я закончу чтение одной русской книги, читая 10 страниц в день. I'll finish reading one Russian book by reading 10 pages a day. Я закончу чтение одной русской книги, читая 10 страниц в день. I'll finish reading one Russian book by reading 10 pages a day. Я сдам тест по русскому. I'll pass my Russian test. Я сдам тест по русскому. I'll pass my Russian test. Я смогу полностью понять один русский фильм, смотря его каждый день. I'll fully understand one Russian movie by watching it every day. Я смогу полностью понять один русский фильм, смотря его каждый день. I'll fully understand one Russian movie by watching it every day. Я подготовлю трехминутный рассказ о себе на русском языке для своих русских друзей. I'll prepare a three-minute introductory speech in Russian to my Russian friends. Я подготовлю трехминутный рассказ о себе на русском языке для своих русских друзей. I'll prepare a three-minute introductory speech in Russian for my Russian friends. Я запомню пять русских песен. I'll memorize five Russian songs. Я запомню пять русских песен. I'll memorize five Russian songs. Challenge me. Я запомню 350 слов по карточкам от RussianPod101.com. I'll finish memorizing 350 words with flashcards on RussianPod101.com. Я запомню 350 слов по карточкам от RussianPod101.com. I'll finish memorizing 350 words with flashcards on RussianPod101.com. Show me your flashcards in Russian. Я напишу 10 открыток на русском для своих русских друзей. I'll write 10 postcards in Russian to my Russian friends. Я напишу 10 открыток на русском для своих русских друзей. I'll write 10 postcards in Russian for my Russian friends. Открытка in English can be a greeting card and also be a postcard. Literally, postcard – почтовая открытка. 
Почтовая карточка. Postcard means почтовая карточка. But we usually use the word открытка. So if you just say открытка, it's perfectly fine. Я заведу блог на русском языке и буду писать что-нибудь каждый день. I'll start a blog in Russian and I'll post something every day. Я заведу блог на русском и буду писать что-нибудь каждый день. I'll start a blog in Russian and will write something every day. How is your Russian? Я освою 150 слов, запоминая 5 слов в день. I'll master 150 words by memorizing 5 words a day. Я освою 150 слов, запоминая 5 слов в день. I'll master 150 words by memorizing 5 words a day. It was me, Katusha, and what are your top 10 language learning goals for the year? How was it? Did you like it? Don't forget to subscribe and stay with me, Katusha, and RussianPod101.com. Пока, пока. Top 10. Top 10. And I forgot the topic. <laughs> <laughs> so close. Two lessons it was. Da -da -da -dum. Then, uh, no Russian learning. Oh my god, I cannot say that. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Anthony and welcome to Zop Words. Today we are going to be talking about the 10 ways to say hello. Let's start. And first ways, Dobre Utra. Good morning. Dobre Utra. Good morning. Next, Здравствуйте. Hello. If you just want to say hello to someone, you can just say Hello. Здравствуйте. О, oh, привет. Hello. Oh, hi. Next. Давно не виделись. A long time no see. If you really have not seen someone for a long time at a meeting, you can say long time no see. Привет, друг. Давно не виделись. Hey, да, рад тебя видеть. Hello, friends. Long time no see. Hey, yes. It's good to see you. Next. Как поживаете? How have you been? If you meet with a person, you can ask him, how have you been? This will show you interesting that this person has well your up the green. Привет, как поживаете? Как семья? Привет, хорошо, спасибо. А у тебя как? Hi, how have you been? How is family? Hey, yes, all is well. Thank you. And you? Next. Как дела? How are you? The phrase how are you is the same as uh, how have you been, but how are you more often used in speech. Привет, как дела? Hello, how are you? Next, как жизнь? How is it going? Как жизнь? How is it going? Next, как прошел день? How's your day? This phrase you can say at the meeting at the end of the day. For example, the wife asks her husband about how's his day at work. Как прошел день? How's your day? Next. Добрый день. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, uh, usually greet is business correspondence or communication. This phrase is recommended to speak in the interval from uh, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Добрый день. Good afternoon. Next. Добрый вечер. Good evening. Good evening in the same as good afternoon only. This phrase should be used after 6 p.m. Добрый вечер. Good evening. Next. Приятно познакомиться. It's nice to meet you. When you get to know a person after you have learned his name, you should say nice to meet you. Приятно познакомиться. Nice to meet you. And for today it's all. Thank you so much for watching. Today we are talking about the 10 ways to say hello and how would you say hello to a month before 20 p.m.? 
write the answers in the comments. And don't forget to check out RussianPod11.com to learn more Russian. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Пока -пока. Bye -bye. Hi everybody, it's me Katusha. Welcome to RussianPod101.com. Stay with me to check out our new topic. Top 10 marriage proposal lines. Let's begin. Ты выйдешь за меня? Will you marry me? Ты выйдешь за меня? Will you marry me? Я подумаю. I'll think about it. Окажешь ли ты мне честь стать моей женой? Will you do me the honor of becoming my wife? Окажешь ли ты мне честь стать моей женой? Will you do me the honor of becoming my wife? Да, конечно. Yes, of course. Because I won the ring. Сделаешь ли ты меня самым счастливым человеком на земле? Will you make me the happiest man alive? Сделаешь ли ты меня самым счастливым человеком на земле? Will you make me the happiest man alive? Oops, there's something. Пожалуйста, женись на мне. Пожалуйста, пожалуйста. Please marry me. Please, 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 please. <laughs> Ты та, кого я ждал всю свою жизнь. You're the one I've been waiting for my whole life. Ты та, кого я ждал всю свою жизнь. You're the one I've been waiting for my whole life. Чего же мы ждем? Пошли поженимся. So what are we waiting for? Let's get married. <laughs> Я хочу быть с тобой всегда. I want to be with you forever. Я хочу быть с тобой всегда. I want to be with you forever. Uh, literally, the word всегда means all the time. And if you translate the word forever, навсегда. So you can choose which one you want to choose to express your love. If you want to be it all the time or forever. Всегда or навсегда. Я не могу представить свою жизнь без тебя. I can't imagine my life without you in it. Я не могу представить свою жизнь без тебя. I can't imagine my life without you in it. Понимаешь? Ты понимаешь, что я имею в виду? You understand what I mean? <sighs> я хотел бы, чтобы я мог дать тебе все, но надеюсь, что этого кольца достаточно. I wish I could give you everything, but I hope that this ring is enough. Я хотел бы, чтобы я мог дать тебе все, но я надеюсь, этого кольца будет достаточно. I wish I could give you everything, but I hope that this ring is enough. Будь моей. Be mine. Я знаю, что ты и я действительно созданы, чтобы быть вместе. I know now that you and I are truly meant to be together. Я знаю, что ты и я действительно созданы, чтобы быть вместе. I know now that you and I are truly meant to be together. Я... Извини, пожалуйста, но я так не думаю. I'm very sorry, but I don't think that way. Я не понимал, как пуста была моя жизнь, пока не встретил тебя. Before I met you, I never realized how empty my life was. Я не понимал, как пуста была моя жизнь, пока не встретил тебя. Before I met you, I never realized how empty my life was. Мне жаль это слышать, потому что в моей жизни ничего не изменилось. I'm sorry to hear that, but in my life nothing's changed. Нам предназначено быть вместе. We are meant to be together. Нам предназначено быть вместе. We are meant to be together. Я могу читать по звездам. I can read the stars. Hey guys, so it was me, Katusha, and top 10 marriage proposal lines. I wish you can hear one or one of them in Russian in your direction and uh, then you will know how to answer in a positive or negative way so good luck to you and don't forget to comment and maybe share your experience with proposal lines talk to you later keep in touch and пока пока привет всем меня зовут анастасия 
В этом уроке я расскажу вам об очень интересном празднике – Дне космонавтики, который отмечается каждый год 12 апреля. Этот праздник был установлен в честь первого в мире полета человека в космос. Как вы думаете, кто первый предложил праздновать День космонавтики в СССР? Мы покажем вам ответ в конце этого видео. Как известно, 12 апреля 1961 года советский космонавт Юрий Гагарин в 9 часов 7 утра по московскому времени на своем космическом корабле, который назывался «Восток-1», стартовал с космодрома Байконур, который расположен на территории современного Казахстана и является самым первым и большим в мире космодромом. На орбите Земли Юрий Гагарин провел 108 минут. Это был первый полет человека в космос. В честь этого пахального исторического события Указом Президиума Верховного Совета СССР в 1962 году и был учрежден День космонавтики. В этот день президент Российской Федерации поздравляет всех космонавтов с праздником. В парках, музеях, библиотеках, выставочных центрах проходят различные выставки и экспозиции на тему космоса, а также праздничные концерты. В информационных центрах по атомной энергии накануне праздника можно послушать научные лекции, поиграть в игры и поучаствовать в викторинах по космической тематике. В День космонавтики в Москве ночью проходит праздничный салют. В 2014 году в России была проведена уникальная акция, которая называлась «СМС на МКС». Все желающие могли отправить сообщения с поздравлениями космонавтов на Международную космическую станцию. Самые теплые и оригинальные поздравления космонавты, которые в тот момент находились на МКС, зачитали во время сеанса связи с Землей. В этот праздничный день многие кафе и рестораны проводят так называемые космические вечеринки, на которых предлагают специальные праздничные меню и концертные программы. А теперь я отвечу на заданный ранее вопрос. Как вы думаете, кто первый предложил праздновать День космонавтики в СССР? Предложение об учреждении этого праздника было внесено летчиком-космонавтом Германом Титовым, который в 1961 году совершил второй космический полет и находился в космосе 25 часов. На момент полета Титова было всего 26 лет. Hello friends, my name is Anthony and welcome to Top Worlds. Today we are going to be talking about the top 10 tourist attraction in Russia. Let's start. And first attraction – Большой театр, Большой театр. This is a huge feather, which is located in Moscow. Большой театр знает во всем мире. Большой театр is known all over the world. Next attraction – Kiji. Kiji. Kiji is one of the 1369 islands in the northeastern part of Onega Lake. Kiji – музей под открытым небом и один из объектов всемирного наследия ЮНЕСКО. Kiji is an open-air museum and one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Next attraction – Озеро Байкал. Lake Baikal. Baikal is one of the oldest lakes in the world and the most famous lake in Russia. Baikal – самое глубокое озеро в мире. Lake Baikal – in the deepest lake in the world. Next attraction – Собор Василия Блаженова. St. Basil's Cathedral. St. Basil's Cathedral is a church in the Red Square in Moscow. Собор Василия Блаженного выглядит очень необычно для Российской Церкви. St. Basil's Cathedral has a very unusual design for a Russian church. Next attraction – Транссибирская магистраль. Транссибирян Railway. Транссибирян Railway. The Транссибирян Railway is a network of railways connecting Moscow with the Russian Far East. Транссибирская магистраль – самая длинная железная дорога в мире. The Trans-Siberian Railway is the longest railway in the whole world. Next attraction – Третьяковская галерея. Третьяков Gallery. The State Третьяков Gallery is an art gallery in Moscow. В Третьяковской галерее можно видеть как древние иконы, так и произведения современного искусства. You can see both inside icons and modern art at the Tretikov Gallery. Next attraction – Царское село. Царское село. Царское село is a museum preserve located in the city of Pushkin. 
Царское село служило летней резиденцией для императорской семьи. Царское село was a summer residence of the imperial family. Next attraction – Эрмитаж. Hermitage Museum. The Hermitage Museum is one of the largest art and cultural historical museums in Russia and the world. Практически каждый турист мечтает побывать в Эрмитаже. Almost every tourist dreams of visiting Hermitage Museum. Next attraction. Красная площадь. Red Square. Red Square is the main square of Moscow, located in the heart of the city. Первым делом в Москве нужно побывать на Красной площади. Red Square is the first place to be visited in Moscow. Next attraction – Sofiyski Sabor, Cathedral of St. Sophia. Cathedral of St. Sophia, the main orthodox church of Veliki Novgorod. Sofiyski Sabor в Новгороде – древнейшая церковь на территории России. The Cathedral of St. Sophia in Novgorod city is the oldest church in Russia. And for today it's all. Thank you so much for watching. Today we are talking about the top 10 tourist attractions in Russia. And what attraction of Russia did you want to see? Write your answers in the comments. And don't forget to check out RussianProt11.com to learn more Russian. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Пока -пока. Bye -bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. series, you'll master Russian pronunciation. Proper pronunciation is essential in Russian, and in this series, you'll learn it in a fast, comprehensive, and easy way. In this first lesson, you'll learn about the building blocks of the Russian pronunciation system that will help you in future lessons. The Russian alphabetical writing system is derived from the Cyrillic script, which is one of the most commonly used writing systems in the world. The Russian alphabet is made up of 33 letters, consisting of 21 consonants, 10 vowels, and two extra letters which act as modifiers. But be careful not to fall into a very common trap. As you're learning to speak correctly, you shouldn't concern yourself with all the letters. That's right, forget them. You care about the sounds of Russian, and here they are. There are 37 consonant sounds and 13 vowel sounds. Each symbol that you see here represents a single sound determined by the IPA, which is a standardized way to represent sounds without the baggage that's usually involved with traditional letters. By using all of these sounds, you can form every single word in Russian. Have you noticed how most consonant sounds in Russian exist in pairs? K, K, M, M. In each pair, there is the original pronunciation of the consonant sound, K and that same sound, but with an added Y sound. Ki. Nearly all consonant sounds in Russian exist in this kind of pairing. So if you know how to pronounce the original sound, it's quite easy to figure out its counterpart simply by adding an additional Y sound. Still seem complicated? Well, how about this? 
of the 37 consonant sounds in Russian, you already know 15 of the original sounds. That's right. If you're a native English speaker, then you already make these sounds every day. You can also ignore 10 of the vowel sounds for the very same reason. With just a tiny bit of effort and creativity, you could effectively ignore 14 more consonant sounds simply by adding a Y sound to the ones that you already know. The only thing standing between you and perfect Russian pronunciation is eight new consonant sounds and three new vowel sounds. You can handle that. Now let me introduce Katya, who will be helping you to master these new sounds. Привет, меня зовут Катя. Katya will be giving you native pronunciation examples for you to imitate. But for this first lesson, just sit back and listen to the unique sounds of Russian. Рыба, горло, река, три, синий, есть, щетка, щель, цель, отец, чай, часы, жест. Тяжелый, дрожжи, езжу, ты, мы, южный, юноша, Россия, молоко. In the next lesson, we'll look at the top five pronunciation mistakes Russian learners make. You'll want to make sure not to fall into these common traps. After that, we'll begin going through the vowels and consonants of Russian. This is your chance to learn how to correctly say all of the words you just heard. We'll finish up the series by covering some special topics that will really make your Russian sound natural. To close this lesson, here's a question for you. Why is it important to spend time on learning proper pronunciation, even if you're already an advanced speaker? The answer, you will be understood and this will help you build more confidence as you communicate in Russian. For beginners, you're creating a strong foundation to build on. And for more advanced students, this is your chance to improve your accent and lose any bad habits you may have picked up. In this lesson, you'll learn the top five Russian pronunciation mistakes to avoid. These are common mistakes that Russian learners tend to make. So pay close attention and make sure that you don't make these same mistakes too. Are you ready? Then let's get started. Hey. This is a rare sound that doesn't exist in many languages. Many Russian learners are unable to pronounce this vowel simply because it's unfamiliar to them. When Russian learners attempt to pronounce this vowel, they tend to pronounce it as e instead of u. This is an issue because the former sound is another vowel in Russian. Consider these two words. Bit. Bit. These two words sound very similar, but their meanings are completely different. It is essential that you're able to clearly distinguish between the two vowels. E. U. The inability to do so could lead to some very problematic misunderstandings. We'll cover this sound in the next lesson. Stay tuned so that you can correct this common mistake. This is another letter that's difficult for Russian learners to deal with. The soft sign is a letter that acts like a modifier. It doesn't produce any sound on its own, but is instead used to affect a preceding letter's sound quality by adding palatalization. The problem arises when speakers pronounce words without paying attention to the tiny soft sign. Compare the following examples. Listen to Katya and pay attention to the way it's pronounced in the following words. Brat, brat, ugal, ugal, mat, mat. Sometimes, the soft sign may be the only quality that distinguishes two words. As you can see, ignoring the soft sign will undoubtedly lead to miscommunication. But don't worry, we'll teach you all about these sounds and palatalization throughout this series. Sh. This is another difficult sound for Russian learners. It should sound similar to the SHCH sound in the words fresh cheese, but a little softer, or like the SH in the words ship or sheep. Be careful though, because it's not the same as the sh in shock. The sh in ship forces the tongue to be raised higher than in words like shock. Listen carefully to the way that Katya pronounces this consonant. Sh. Sh. Blush. Shuka. Shotka. Notice how it sounds a little more constricted and tense. It also sounds slightly longer than other consonants. If you want to know how to pronounce this sound correctly, stay tuned until lesson six, where we break it down in detail. 
There are many different ways to construct statements and questions in Russian, either with or without the use of interrogative words like what, why, when, how, and so forth. And because of this fact, things can get quite chaotic when improper intonation is used. Intonation can transform a statement into a question and vice versa in Russian. Many students of Russian don't pay much attention to intonation. Without the proper intonation, however, it's very difficult for native listeners to judge whether the utterance is a statement or a question. Compare the following examples. Это музей. Это музей? The first example is a statement, meaning, this is a museum. The second is a question, meaning, is this a museum? As you can see, changing the intonation alone can change the meaning of a sentence entirely. Improper use of intonation can lead to very problematic communication. Try to pay attention to the way native Russians pronounce sentences and try to imitate them. Don't beat yourself up if you don't get it straight away, though, because intonation usually comes naturally the more you study a language. Y. E. Many letters in Russian look very similar, and this can be a difficult problem for new learners. This is particularly true for these two letters. Y is a consonant, and it sounds like the Y sound in boy. E is actually a vowel, even though it looks very similar to the previous letter. It sounds like the I sound in visa. Consider the following examples. Moi, mai, tvoi, tvai. Clearly, failing to recognize these two letters will result in the wrong pronunciation. Try to be mindful of these two letters and other letters that may look alike in Russian. Now you know the top five Russian pronunciation mistakes to avoid. Try to be careful so that you don't make these same mistakes. In this lesson, you'll learn all 13 Russian vowel sounds. By learning all of these sounds, you'll be able to pronounce any vowel that could possibly appear in Russian. Are you ready? Then let's get started. There are a total of 13 vowel sounds in Russian, all of which can be broken down into three categories, hard indicating, soft indicating, and unstressed vowel sounds. First, let's take a look at all five hard indicating vowel sounds. The first vowel is a, da, atom, trava. This vowel sound is identical to the a in far. Be sure to lower your jaw and allow the mouth to open completely. A, a. Ah. Ah. The next vowel is e. Eta. Ekran. Jest. This vowel sound is identical to the e in education. E. 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 The next vowel is U, T, M, Yazik. Raise the middle part of your tongue all the way to the roof of your mouth until there's only a tiny opening for air to travel through. The back of the tongue should be flat against the back roof of the mouth so that the tongue is tense. Try to create a narrow channel from the base of the throat all the way to the roof of the mouth. Your lips should remain neutral. Listen to Katya. E. 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 The next vowel is O. On. Oblaka. Овощи. This vowel sound is very similar to the O in OR. Exaggerating the lip rounding may also help with the pronunciation of this sound. O. 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 The final hard indicating vowel is U. Удочка. Муж. Пуля. This vowel sound is identical to the U in true. 
be sure to raise the back part of your tongue all the way up against the back roof of your mouth. Exaggerating your lip rounding may also help with the pronunciation of this sound. Ooh. 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 You just learned five hard indicating vowel sounds. Now let's move on to soft indicating vowel sounds. Я, яблоко, ягода, яхта. This is identical to the yaw sound in yard. Be sure to lower your jaw and allow your mouth to open completely. Я, 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 я. The next vowel is. Е, есть, евро, ездить. It sounds very similar to the Y-E in year. Е, 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 е. The next vowel is И. Имя, пить, щи. It's identical to the double E sound in C. И, 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 и. The next vowel is Йо. Тетя, актер, свое. It sounds very similar to the Y-O in your. Йо, 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 йо. The final soft indicating vowel is Ю, южный. Юбка, юноша. It sounds very similar to you. Be sure to raise the back part of your tongue all the way up against the back roof of your mouth. Exaggerating your lip rounding may also help with the pronunciation of this sound. You, 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 you. Well done. You've learned all the hard and soft indicating vowels in Russian. The final three vowel sounds are sounds that are only produced when certain vowels are in unstressed syllables. The first vowel sound that occurs in unstressed syllables is... А. Россия. Молоко. Вода. This is similar to the U in Russell. The key part here is to pronounce it quickly. Ah, 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 ah. The next vowel sound is ah. Облака, новая, кожа. It's identical to the a in about. When practicing, make sure you pronounce it about instead of about. А, 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 а. The final sound that occurs in unstressed syllables and the final vowel sound for this lesson is Е, еда, язык, дерево. It's identical to the Y-I in yippee. The key part here is to pronounce it quickly. Ye. 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 Well done! You've just learned all 13 vowel sounds in Russian. With these sounds, you can pronounce any vowel that could possibly appear in the Russian language. Isn't that great? In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Russian pronunciation. 
Russian pronunciation is arguably easier to learn than English. Consider the following English words. The first word is pronounced colonel, not colonel. The second word is pronounced arise. Adding an N, however, doesn't give you arisen, but arisen. The last word is pronounced eight, but adding an H doesn't give you hate. Instead, it becomes height. English is notorious for being a difficult language to learn, and it can be very frustrating for learners due to the fact that its pronunciation rules often don't make a lot of sense. Russian, on the other hand, can seem like a blessing when compared to English. Dub, vada, dom. Russian is primarily pronounced as it's spelled. There are some exceptions but they're governed by more defined rules compared to English. Even loan words, like the greeting you learned in the previous lesson, are largely pronounced as written. Здравствуйте! All you need to learn now, then, are the sounds of Russian. There are many vowel and consonant sounds in Russian. Luckily, Russian puts its letters into two main categories of sounds, hard and soft. There are a total of 10 vowels in Russian, and they're divided equally. There are five hard vowels which are a little similar to English. A, E, U, O, U. And five soft vowels. These are vowels that have a netted glide or Y like quality, making them sound softer. Ya, Ye, I, Yo, You. Please note though, that the number of vowel sounds do not equal the number of vowel letters. There are actually more vowel sounds than they're represented by letters. Similar to vowels, consonant sounds can also be hard or soft. B, B, V, V, D, D, Z, Z. Unlike vowels, though, Consonants aren't differentiated into separate letters based on their hardness or softness alone. A single consonant letter is used to represent two sounds, one hard m, and one soft. M. This is because Russian is actually read in blocks. We use the closest vowel which comes after the consonant to indicate whether to pronounce the consonant hard or soft. If the consonant is followed by a hard vowel, then the consonant is also pronounced hard. Ma, masla. On the other hand, if the consonant is followed by a soft vowel, then the consonant is also pronounced soft. Mia, masa. The many contrasts between hard and soft consonant and vowels is what gives Russian its distinct gliding sound. We saw before how a relationship exists between letters and sounds based on their hardness. Voicing is another quality that's important to be aware of when learning Russian pronunciation. Voicing simply refers to whether or not your vocal cords are vibrating or not vibrating. English has voiced pairs as well. Consider the following letters. P, B, T, D, K, G. Do you notice the relationship between these letters? The letters in each pair are pronounced exactly the same. The only difference being that one requires your vocal cords to vibrate and the other to not vibrate. Sounds that do not require vibration of the vocal cords, like all the ones on the left-hand side, are considered voiceless, while sounds that do require vibration of the vocal cords, like all the ones on the right-hand side, are considered voiced. Consider the following example in Russian. This letter is pronounced G. But this word here isn't pronounced bog, but Bok. Notice how the letter G is written, which is a voiced letter, but is actually pronounced as the letter K, a voiceless letter. So what ended up happening? The final consonant is a voiced consonant, but when the word is being pronounced, the letter is actually read using the voiceless counterpart instead. This occurs to all words that end in the final consonant in Russian. Final consonants are pronounced voiceless, so despite what's written, always pronounce the final consonant in Russian using the voiceless version. B, zub, 
z без The key to perfecting Russian pronunciation is to master hard and soft pairs and voiced pairs. Unlike many other languages, Russian pronunciation is heavily affected by sounds that are adjacent to each other, often adopting the sound qualities of the letters that surround them. Once you understand the concept and the relationship between hard and soft pairs and voiced pairs, Russian pronunciation actually becomes quite logical and easy to learn. Okay, let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, we introduce you to some important concepts for learning Russian pronunciation. You learned that there are hard and soft pairs in Russian, about voiced pairs in Russian, and that letters can adopt these sound qualities. If you're interested in learning more about Russian pronunciation, check out the entire course we created named The Ultimate Guide to Russian Pronunciation. In that course, we cover and break down every single sound in the Russian language, showing you mouth and tongue positioning and giving you tips to help you perfect your Russian pronunciation. 10 hardest words to pronounce. 10 hardest words to pronounce it. Russian pronunciation is not easy. So, are you ready for the challenge? Now, let's begin. Split. Come out to the surface. Split. Split. <laughs> I bet you can't say that. I guess uh, what's difficult about this uh, sound is that V and S come together. One after the other. V Split, because split is swimming or floating. So something comes out from inside the water to the top, to the surface. So v split, split. Okay, now you can say this word. Dnyom, in the afternoon. Well, here you have a hard D uh, changing with the soft yo. So it sounds like dnyom. I prefer having my breakfast in the early afternoon. Я предпочитаю завтракать рано днём. Достопримечательность. Attraction. Достопримечательность. For example, when you're going to Paris or somewhere, you can see many different um, tourist attractions. Let's make a sentence. Eiffel Tower is one of the tourist attractions. Eiffelевая башня. Одна из туристических достопримечательностей. Кремль. Главная туристическая достопримечательность Москвы. Крем is a main tourist attraction in Moscow. <laughs> Did it sound too long? Well, sorry. That's Russian, guys. Ёжик. Hedgehog. Ёжик. Ёжик. Этот ёжик такой милый. This hedgehog is so cute. Здравствуйте. Hello. Здравствуйте. Actually, in the middle of the word, there is a letter V. You can see in the writing form. But when you say it, it disappears. So, instead of Здравствуйте, we just say Здравствуйте. When you see someone for the first time or someone you don't know, you can say Здравствуйте. Меня зовут Катя. Hello, my name is Katya. Пожалуйста. Please. Пожалуйста. Uh, this word is usually uh, used in the beginning or in the end uh, of the sentence. So, if you want to ask for something, you can say, Give me the receipt, please. Дайте мне чек, пожалуйста. Преподаватель. Teacher. Преподаватель. Well, uh, basically, teaching is преподавание or to teach someone is преподавать basically to bring your knowledge to someone my teacher was late to the class today сегодня мой преподаватель опоздал на урок пять five пять пять give me five дай мне пять yay <laughs> чебурашка 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 it's a made up word for the animation character. For example, I used to love watching Чебурашка. Когда я была маленькая, я обожала смотреть Чебурашков. Шишка. Пайнкон. Шишка. 
Well, how shall I explain this? It's like when you're trying whistling, but you can. So you say shh, you know, and then you just put another sh after. So shishka. <laughs> Maybe it helps you. Shishka. Uh, there were many pine cones uh, in the forest. Plisu bula mnoga shishek. Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Gelavik. The tricky thing with this word is that in plural it changes completely. So one man is человек, and many men is люди. Have you seen this man? Вы видели этого человека? Вы видели этого человека? Сказать. To say. Я хочу сказать. I would like to say, and then you keep saying what you want to say. The boss said, blah, blah, blah. Начальник сказал, and then you keep going what exactly he says. Добрый день. Good afternoon. Добрый means that something is good. So people are wishing you something good in the day when you wake up, when they meet you at school at the daytime, or like in the evening. But usually you say привет, which is hello. Рука. Hand. One hand, two hands, руки. Give me your hand. Дай мне свою руку. Дай мне свою руку. Hmm? Знать. To know. I know what you know. Я знаю, что ты знаешь. Я знаю. I know. Ты знаешь. You... Как вас зовут? What's your name? So first, when you see a stranger, you have to say, Здравствуйте. Как вас зовут? In Russia, we show this from money, деньги. So if you see somebody showing you the sign, they, it means they want some money from you. Give me some money. Дай мне деньги. Дай мне деньги. Хотеть. To want. Я хочу. I want. What do you want? Что ты хочешь? When you meet anyone you know, you want to ask what? You want to ask, how are you, right? So, sometimes instead of hello, you just go, how are you? Как дела? Привет, как дела? Literally, how are your things going? So now you can make a conversation. Голова. One head is good, but two is better. Одна голова хорошо, а две лучше. Одна голова хорошо, а две лучше. I had to stand in a train for two hours. Мне пришлось стоять в поезде два часа. Пожалуйста. Please. Or you're welcome. The difference in uh, please and you're welcome is just the way you say it. For example, Mama, please, I don't want to go to school. Пожалуйста, мама, я не хочу идти в школу. Which we can hear every morning. Or you can say present, an iPad from my friend is like, oh, спасибо, and they go like, пожалуйста, like, you're welcome. Pay attention to which word you're using. Смотри за словами. Смотри за словами. Uh, maybe it's not very literal um, translation, but it means watch your mouth or something like that. Read. To leave. When you introduce yourself and you want to say where you live, exactly which city, which town, which country, or like which district. So, я живу в Москве. I live in Moscow. You can say, пока-пока, which means bye-bye. Call me next week. Позвони мне на следующей неделе. Позвони мне на следующей неделе. What do you like to eat? Что ты любишь кушать? Что ты любишь кушать? Hmm? Я хочу заказать. I would like to order something. Я хочу заказать салат. I would like to order salad. You made up your mind, so you want to order this. So, я хочу. If you want to say it in a more polite way, for example, you're in a very high-end restaurant, and so you want to be polite with a waiter, so you could say, я бы хотел заказать. I would like to order. Я бы хотела заказать чашечку кофе. I would like to order a cup of coffee. That would sound much nice. Basically the same with the mother. Uh, you can say uh, in an official way, отец, your father, твой отец. 
Or you can say in more friendly way, tvoj papa, your father, tvoj papa. Tvoj papa ljubit rybalku. Does your father like fishing? Tvoj papa ljubit rybalku. Zjat, to take. Ja magu tibia vzjat saboj. I can take you with me. Izvinite. I'm sorry and excuse me. If you say I'm sorry, you can say Izvinite, like you're really sorry about something you've done. But you can say, excuse me, like you stepped on somebody's foot in the train. You can say, oi, izvinite. Sestra. Have you met his sister? She is very nice. Ты знаком с его сестрой? Она очень приятная девушка. You can say, give me please. Дай мне, пожалуйста. Дай мне, пожалуйста. Or you can say, давайте. It's a bit different meaning, means let's do something. Давайте. Давайте пойдем гулять. Let's go for a walk. I'd like to give you a piece of advice. Я хочу дать тебе совет. Yes. Russian people say a lot. Да, 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 да. Yes, 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 yes. I agree. Да, да, да. Take care of your bag. Пожалуйста, смотри за своей сумкой. Top 10 phrases to never use in a relationship. Let's check it out. Я тебе говорила. Я тебе говорила. I told you so. Я тебе говорила. Я тебе говорила. А я тебе что говорила? I told you so. Ладно, без тебя обойдусь. Ладно, без тебя обойдусь. Oh, I'll do it myself. Ладно, без тебя обойдусь. Oh, I'll do it myself. If a girl tells you, I'll do it myself, you have to do everything you can to do it for her. <laughs> Otherwise, it's the end of relationship. <laughs> Ты меня никогда не слушаешь. Ты меня никогда не слушаешь. You never listen to me. Ты меня никогда не слушаешь. Ты меня никогда не слушаешь. Hello? <laughs> you never listen to me. <sighs> I guess it uh, comes to the times when the guys are watching TV and the girl is talking to them about something important at the same time. <laughs> so let's avoid that. Нам надо поговорить. We should talk. Нам надо поговорить. Нам надо поговорить. We should talk. Не важно. Не важно. Never mind. Не важно. Never mind. Means it's very, very important. <laughs> Это все ты виноват. Это все ты виноват. It's all your fault. Это все ты виноват. Это все. Ты виноват. This is all your fault. I just broke my heel. This is all your fault. You invited me to the date. Unbelievable. <laughs> Ненавижу, когда ты так делаешь. Ненавижу, когда ты так делаешь. I hate it when you do that. Ненавижу, когда ты так делаешь. Ненавижу, когда ты так делаешь. I hate it when you do that. Твои друзья мне не нравятся. Твои друзья мне не нравятся. I don't like your friends. Твои друзья мне не нравятся. Твои друзья мне не нравятся. I don't like your friends. Я думаю, нам нужен перерыв. Я думаю, нам нужен перерыв. I think we should take a break. Я думаю, нам нужен перерыв. I think we should take a break. От тебя помощи не дождешься. От тебя помощи не дождешься. You never help me. От тебя помощи не дождешься. 
от тебя помощи не дождешься. You never help me. Never. Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. How to tell the gender of a noun. In Russian, the gender of nouns is determined by the endings, suffixes, and some other indicators. However, you can accurately tell the gender of a noun only if it's in a singular number of the nominative case. Let me try to explain to you how it all works. Masculine nouns, names included, usually have at their end either a consonant, including y, or a soft sign, which, as you remember, doesn't have a sound of its own. For example, круг, circle, гость, guest, чай, tea, Ivan. That's a Russian male name. It's important to mention that diminutive or short Russian male names usually end in a vowel, in either a or ya. For example, the diminutive of the name Anton is Antosha. The diminutive of Dmitri is Dima. The diminutive of Mikhail is Misha. And diminutive of Ivan is Vanya. Feminine nouns, names included, usually end with either a vowel or a soft sign. For example, книга – book, земля – land, мать – mother, Yelena. that's a Russian female name. And feminine nouns usually have the suffix ost. Радость – happiness, верность – loyalty, честность – honesty. Finally, neuter nouns have vowels o, ye, and yo as their endings. For example, окно – window, зелье – potion, ружье – rifle. Certain suffixes can also serve as gender indicators. For example, the typical masculine suffixes are цель – онок and йонок, строитель – builder, оттенок – Tint, котенок, kitten. And now we'll talk a bit about the cases when adjectives act as nouns. The examples of this are караульный, guard, столовая, dining room, сладкая, sweets. Again, similarly to the regular nouns, such words have typical endings. The masculine ending is ы, with the consonant at the end. Караульный. The feminine ending is aya, with the vowel at the end. Столовая. The neuter ending is oya, with the vowel ye at the end. Сладко. In this video, you'll learn three reasons you're never too old to learn a language, and you'll also learn three ways our learning system can help people of all ages to study efficiently. Number one, seniors have better focus. Learning a new language in your 50s or 60s may actually be easier than learning as a teenager or young adult. More mature adults can better focus on the details necessary to master a new language. Older people are also often more dedicated to their goals and put more work into achieving them. Seniors are better able to focus on completing lessons and reaching goals. There are a lot of distractions out there these days for young people. There's everything from Facebook to Instagram and all the usual drama of daily life at work and at school. Seniors are typically less concerned with these kinds of things and are better at focusing on tasks until completion. This is extremely important for language study, where regular practice and attention to detail are key. Not only are you never too old to learn, you may have some advantages over younger learners. Our language learning program has a number of special tools to make learning a new language in your 50s or 60s easy. You'll use the same resources as a tech-savvy teenager. Number two, learning is vital to healthy and happy living. Learning is actually vital to your health. Doing things like playing word games, doing puzzles, and even using online platforms like Luminosity do help keep the mind nimble. But nothing compares to learning a second language in terms of health benefits for your mind. Learning another language may be one of the very best retirement hobbies you can pick up. You can also apply your second language knowledge when you travel. Number three, there are health benefits to learning new things after the age of 60. 
Learning a second language increases the number of neural pathways in the brain. Forging these new neural pathways helps you code and sort the new language you are learning. In addition, there are other brain health benefits associated with learning a new language. Here's a list of benefits bilingual people can enjoy. Higher overall general intelligence. Better memory and memorization skills. Better perception of surroundings. Better focus, concentration, and attention to detail. So in a very real way, learning a new language is one of the best and most practical retirement hobbies you can find because it helps protect against cognitive decline as you age. Now let's talk about how our language learning program has methods to make sure you can start learning in your 50s, 60s, and beyond. Number one, we have an intuitive, easy to use system. Learning in old age doesn't have to be hard or irritating. It can and should be fun. From your very first lesson, we'll make sure you're speaking fluently every day. You can start and stop each lesson as many times as you want. Study when you want, where you want, and at the pace you decide. Number two, you'll find special tools to boost retention and performance. As we mature, learning to use the right tools is vital to getting jobs done fast and right. So we make it easier than ever to make learning in old age fun and rewarding with a wide range of tools to boost retention and performance, including spaced repetition flashcards so you can learn vocab fast, line-by-line -line audio transcripts so you can read along with each lesson, pronunciation and accent review, instructor lesson notes, review quizzes, 2000 core words, enough for fluency, you are truly never too old to learn with more than 20 tools and resources to help boost learning and performance. Number three, you'll get support every step of the way. Although you may never be too old to learn, it doesn't hurt to have a little help along the way. Our language learning system has helped thousands of seniors learn and master a new language with help and support at every step. We offer 24 seven assistance. Just send us an email. We have dedicated language experts standing by to help you with any problem or issue you may be experiencing. There is also instructor feedback. Have specific questions about a lesson or your progress? You can directly email instructors and get direct responses to any question you may have about your studies or lessons. Or try studying with your very own instructor. Members of our exclusive Premium Plus plan not only get a custom curriculum tailored to their very own goals, they also gain access to their very own language instructor. Learning in old age isn't just a luxury. It's crucial to helping avoid the onset of Alzheimer's, dementia, and other age-related cognitive issues. Specifically, learning another language helps increase overall intelligence and improve awareness, memory, and overall cognitive function. So not only are you never too old to learn a new language for health reasons, it's a great way to meet new people and start adventures. Want to cut your language studying time in half? In this video, you'll discover how learning a language using PDF lessons is convenient, efficient, and can help you cut your studying time nearly in half. Many people give up on their dream of learning a second language because traditional classroom instruction is too much of a hassle. Between getting to class, studying on someone else's schedule, and just the sheer expense of the books and tuition, traditional learning can be tough. Many people simply give up. Online classes are an option, but sometimes limited data plans can derail the dream of learning a new language. Fortunately, there is a solution, learning language using PDF lesson notes. Let's take a closer look at how studying language lessons in PDF format can help you reach your dream in about half the time of normal video or audio lessons. First, print all lessons and PDF tools and take them with you anywhere. Sometimes a tiny smartphone screen just isn't adequate, especially when you're trying to learn something new. The great thing about PDF lessons is that they can be quickly printed and taken anywhere after you download them. In fact, printing out lessons in PDF format can actually save you time when compared to going through the material on a smartphone with a small screen, even with the extra printing time. Second, they're a great study tool to boost retention and mastery. Studying video or audio lessons online is a great way to learn a language because students can play and rewind sections as many times as needed until the lesson is mastered. But when you review the same lessons again in PDF format, an incredible thing happens. Your retention dramatically improves. Thanks to time-spaced repetition, seeing the information again in written format 
helps reinforce the information in your mind and improves both retention and recall. The benefits of learning a language using PDF lessons quickly add up to significant time savings for you, your data plan, and your dream of learning a new language. Third, all lessons in PDF format include in-depth instructor notes. We have thousands of HD video and audio lessons, and each one includes a PDF version with a line-by-line -line transcript, so you can read along with the lesson as it appears online. In addition to the line-by-line -line transcript, all lessons include in-depth instructor notes with more information, sample sentences, explanations, and translations. The additional information and notes help you learn faster and with greater mastery than using the video or audio lessons alone. And when paired with language learning video games, video and audio lessons, or other study aids, our PDF lessons help you reach your dream of learning a new language faster and easier than many traditional classroom settings. Fourth, you can download the world's largest online collection of lessons by real instructors. Planning on going on vacation and don't know if you'll have reliable internet service? If you're learning through PDF lessons, it's not a problem. Once you download lessons in PDF format to your smartphone, PC, or favorite media device, they are yours to use and keep forever. Once downloaded, you can either print out or access your lessons in PDF format, regardless of internet access. When you consistently learn through PDF lessons, the time savings and benefits quickly compound. From quicker access to faster learning, PDF lessons can potentially reduce total study time required to learn a concept. Our PDF lessons include instructor notes and supplemental resources that help you learn faster and with less effort. Does having a study partner help you learn a language faster? For most people, having a friend or romantic partner who is a native speaker of their target language dramatically improves their ability to master the language. In this video, we'll talk about some ways to help you build relationships with people. We'll also talk about three reasons having a native speaker partner can improve your language fluency. First, knowing a native speaker helps you better understand the culture. Knowing a native speaker gets you connected with the culture in ways that no lessons or textbooks ever could. Native speakers are better informed about the latest slang expressions and know interesting places to eat and hang out. Having a friend or partner who is a native speaker can dramatically improve your understanding of the language. In addition to language, you can learn about cultural practices, gestures, and relationships. Second, having a native speaker partner increases your exposure to the language. Practice makes perfect is a well-known expression that is certainly true for language learning. When you have a friend, romantic partner, or study buddy, you speak to them through text messages, phone calls, and basic interaction. These are all opportunities for you to practice the language. Making an effort to practice will help your vocabulary quickly expand beyond simple greetings, flirtatious words, and basic comments to deeper, more meaningful conversations. Third, a supportive partner is the best study aid you can find. We all make mistakes, especially when trying to learn a new language. But if you have a supportive partner, they can gently point out your mistakes and help you find better ways to express yourself. And if your native speaker study partner is also your romantic partner, your motivation will likely be even higher than someone who does not have a romantic relationship with a native speaker. Now, let's look at three ways our language learning program helps you learn even faster if you have a native speaker partner. First, all resources and materials are available in English and in your target language. Studying with a partner is special because it's an opportunity for both of you to learn a new language. That's why every single lesson, transcript, vocabulary list, and resource on our website is available in English and in your target language. You can learn from each other. Second, lessons are designed to help you understand and engage with culture. On our website, our focus is to help our students learn practical vocabulary and phrases that are actually used in everyday conversation. This means that from your very first lesson, you can start applying what you learn immediately. So if you want to go out to a restaurant, play games, or attend a social function with your partner, you'll have the vocabulary and phrases necessary to have a great time. Third, access to special resources dedicated to romantic phrases. If your study partner is your romantic partner, we have resources to help you communicate your feelings correctly. Our language learning program has special sections and tools to teach you love words, phrases, and cultural insights. Of course, please remember that simply being in a relationship is no substitute for studying. Communication is key to every relationship, whether romantic or not. 
If you fail to continue expanding your vocabulary and you stop learning the language on your own, your relationships may suffer or fizzle out. Without question, spending time with native speakers can help you dramatically improve your language proficiency. But this is no replacement for focused studying. It's essential to help facilitate better communication and master the language. Want to transform your driving time into language learning time? How much time do you spend in your car every day? 30 minutes? More than an hour? Why not put this huge amount of time to good use? Instead of just listening to the radio during your daily commute, you could be learning a new language instead. Here are three easy methods for learning a language in your car. You can put them to use right away with the help of our language learning program. First, you can listen to fun audio lessons by real teachers. Listening to lessons while in the car allows you to focus on the road as you listen and learn. In every one of our three to 15 minute lessons, our teachers teach you conversations, new phrases, and cultural points. Audio is the only learning medium that lets you learn and drive safely at the same time. So take advantage of all our audio lessons available. Second, you can set your lessons on autoplay and go hands-free. Our autoplay feature lets you keep your hands on the wheel without even reaching for your device. Just set your lessons to autoplay one by one with our Innovative Language 101 app and never have to interrupt your focus on driving to switch to a new lesson. Third, you can repeat out loud and speak from your very first lesson. You wanna speak a new language too, right? Well, you'll start learning conversations minutes into your lessons. All you have to do is listen and repeat out loud. Our teachers take you step-by-step step through all of the words, phrases, translations, and grammar points. You're even prompted to speak out loud and repeat. The result? You understand it all and can speak your new language. Turn your commute into language learning time and have fun at the same time. Learning doesn't have to be a big commitment, like signing up for a college class. It can be fun and easy. In fact, it's as easy as pressing play. Our language learning programs will do the work for you. And with the exposure you get while driving on your daily commute, you'll be speaking and understanding real life language quickly. The best part? You can finally learn without even changing your schedule. So if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. The three powerful language learning lessons you'll pick up at the gym. And today you're going to learn, one, how to approach your goals, two, how to find time to learn a language, and three, why you don't need the best possible routine or learning program. So, if you've ever spent time in the gym, you'll quickly see how similar training and language learning are. But before we move on, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, want to perfect your pronunciation? Then get our new pronunciation PDF cheat sheet right now. You'll learn how to sound like a native speaker and how to practice your pronunciation. Second, do you know the seven tested ways to learn language fast? With this new ebook, you'll learn how to use our learning system to speak better, remember more words, and improve fast. Download it for free right now. Third, 20 useful phrases for a hair salon. Would you be able to get a haircut in your target language? If you said no, then this one minute lesson is just what you need. Fourth, 20 phrases for doing business successfully. If you're learning the language for work, this one minute lesson is for you. You'll learn the 20 most common greetings, phrases, and questions for business meetings. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. The three powerful language learning lessons you'll pick up at the gym. The first lesson is how to approach your goals and language learning. So why are we talking about the gym? The gym is a great example because it's filled with people working on their goals and it gives you a snapshot of where most people are with their goals. And everyone there has one goal, to be fit. But not everyone is there yet. You have a few people that look like fitness models. Then you have around 20 or 30 people that have good respectable physiques, the middle group. And then the rest of the people are still working their way up. It's motivating because everyone has a chance of succeeding. 
If you've been to the gym, you understand the importance of repetition, doing reps. A rep is the number of times you do a certain exercise. Like 15 push-ups is 15 reps of push-ups. So even people still working toward their goals have a chance of succeeding if they put in the reps. If they do a little bit a day over a long period of time, they'll get there. The process is simple. The more you do, the longer you stick with it, the more progress you make. And the same goes for learning language or any other goal in life. It's about putting in the reps a little bit a day, consistently, for a long period of time. If you want to get bigger muscles, you pick up a dumbbell and you do reps. If you want to learn more words, you do the reps. Five new words a day. So, what can you do right now? For example, if you're using our program, just do one lesson a day. If you have a textbook, do one page a day. If you're using an app, put in five minutes a day. Again, everyone has a chance to succeed. They just need to put in the reps and they need to make the time. This is where the second lesson comes in. You'll learn how to find and make time to learn a language. There's a reason the people you see at the gym daily, and especially the people you see at 10 p.m. on a Friday, are the ones with above average results. They're the most consistent. But how do they get that level of consistency? There tend to be three types of people. First, the people that have plenty of free time, so it's a non-issue for them. Second, the busier people. They make time regardless of what their schedule is like meaning they show up at 1 a.m. just to fit in a session, or they cancel other plans to make time. And third, the people who have made it a habit. They're so used to going that they don't have to think about it. Ideally, you want to be in the third group with language learning, but most people fall into the second group. The truth is that to make time, they have to cancel other plans. Some wake up earlier to squeeze in a session in the a.m. Some go late at night. It's the same exact thing with language learning. You make time. The good news with language learning is you don't need to open up a lesson at 1 a.m. and put in an hour. With our learning program, you'll get our quick but powerful three to 15 minute audio and video lessons. And because the lessons are short, you can easily make time. You can do a lesson on your commute or while walking somewhere. Imagine learning a quick conversation while on your way to the store. Finally, the third language learning lesson you'll learn at the gym is why you don't need the best possible routine to get results. Have you ever heard a friend say, I have to start the right way. It has to be perfect. Well, this is a disastrous way to start anything, whether fitness or language learning. And most learners spend a lot of time worrying about starting right instead of just starting and keeping at it. But the point is, if you start learning from a textbook and stick with it, you'll get results. You'll improve your reading, vocabulary, and grammar. Of course, it won't get you speaking. You'll only get good at what you focus on. But the fact is, you'll still make progress. Same with the gym. If you start off with bicep curls, you'll see progress in time. But at some point, you'll need to add in legs as well. You can't skip leg day. So here's what you can learn. Here's what smart beginners do. They don't look for the best way to start, they just start and keep going. And once they have a consistent routine, they start optimizing, they improve their routine. If you start taking one lesson a day and can easily maintain that routine, then you might eventually realize that you want to practice speaking. You need to shadow that lesson's conversation. So you add shadowing to your routine and that's how you grow. Same thing with the gym. The smart beginners make sure they do their reps and come in as much as possible. And doing the basics is enough for them to build muscle. Later on, they'll start adjusting their exercises and adding new ones. But you'll never get to that point if you overthink yourself into inaction and don't build that habit. So as long as you start and continue, most starting routines and learning methods are good enough. You don't need the best possible one right now. You could have the best possible language learning program, but if you don't use it consistently, it's useless. All right, so today you learned, one, how to approach your goals, two, how to find time to learn a language, and three, why you don't need the best possible routine or learning program. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review. The monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the free lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is 
how to speak more of your target language, talking points for language learners. And today, you're going to learn, one, what talking points are, two, five talking points you can use to start conversations and maximize your speaking time, and three, how to get our conversation cheat sheets so you can speak even more of your target language. And you'll find out how to get them for free. If you've always wanted to speak more in your target language, then this episode is for you. I'll get into this in just a bit. If you're like most language learners, then your number one goal is to speak more, right? You want to have fluent conversations with natives. It's a great goal to have. But for most language learners, speaking also happens to be their weakest skill. You may not know enough of the language to express yourself. You tend to run out of words and things to say and you're just not sure how to start conversation. If you have at least one of these issues, then talking points are just what you need. Part one, what's a talking point? A talking point is a topic that invites discussion or argument. In other words, just something to talk about. It could be about yourself, your work, your hobbies, the weather, food, or what you did this past weekend. All of these are talking points. Here's an example to help you better understand talking points. Think of a conversation you'd have with a friend. You can ask, what did you do this weekend? They'll reply and then ask you back. The talking point here is the weekend. Let's say your friend says they went to a restaurant. That's a natural talking point to explore next. You can ask, what kind of restaurants do you like? Now you've covered two talking points. The more talking points you have, the more you can speak. And the same goes for your target language. The only challenge is you need to know the relevant words and phrases for that topic. For example, if you want to talk about the weekend, you need to know phrases and questions like, what did you do this weekend? I did this. What about you? In the next part, you'll discover five easy talking points that you can master with our learning program. Let's get into part two. Part two, five talking points you can use. The first one is learn how to introduce yourself in your target language. Why is this a powerful talking point? Introducing yourself is something you'll do again and again, every time you meet someone new. So learning the relevant phrases is a must. If you've done the first few lessons on our site, you can already do this. If not, then check out our absolute beginner lessons and the top 25 questions you must know lessons. You'll learn basic conversations with our quick three to 15 minute lessons. We'll give you the exact lines to use, along with the translations, so that you can use them in conversations. You can also use this talking point to continue a conversation. For example, if you've started with a different point, like the weather, then it makes sense to say, by the way, my name is... Talking point number two, the weather. This is a universal talking point. People like to talk or complain about the weather all over the world. In fact, just saying, it's really nice today, is enough to start a conversation with a native speaker. If you want to talk about the weather, check out our can-do lesson pathway called Can Talk About Weather. You'll find this pathway in the absolute beginner level of our lesson library. Talking point number three, compliments. Compliments are another great way to start a conversation or continue one. If you're running out of things to say, you can quickly transition and say something about their city, their country, or just, hey, I like your shirt. If you want to learn how to compliment, check out our compliments phrase list. This list is free to access for all users. If you don't know where to find it on our site, leave a comment in the comments below and we'll follow up. Point number four, ask for help. For example, you can ask for directions or about the price and let the conversation go from there. These are very basic phrases that you learn in our survival phrases lessons. If you want to strike up a quick dialogue, this is a great talking point to use. Point number five, learn phrases for transactions, like getting a room at a hotel, shopping, ordering food, or telling the taxi driver where to go. You may think that this isn't much of a talking point. But for the learners that are shy about talking to random native speakers for no reason, this is an easy way to start a dialogue. You have a good excuse. You wanna buy something so the staff will be happy to respond. Again, you learn all of these with our survival phrases lessons. Okay, let's move on to our last part. Part three, how to get our conversation cheat sheets. Lastly, I'm going to tell you how to get our collection of conversation cheat sheets for free. With these cheat sheets, you'll be able to talk about all kinds of topics, travel, hobbies, dating, family, weather, and much more, which means you can master a lot of talking points and speak more of your target language. 
If you'd like to get these cheat sheets, please leave us a comment in the comment section. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to double your speaking time in your target language. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye! Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.